I like that. Here we go. We're here. We're here for the fireworks, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Hello to all the uh, fellow photographers. We got Michael Dries in here. Uh, he's in Florida. I'm gonna hang in for with us for a little while. We got uh, Gustavo. Is uh, obviously Gustavo. You made it to your end destination. Um, your modified uh, Plan B um, for your photography needs. And um, we got Mike Farwell in here, which is great. Jeff and Leslie. Hello to you guys. Good to see you. Ava, always nice to have you in here. Um, so as usual, we will just, uh, you know, kind of like welcome everybody as they come in. And when we hit about 25-ish people, we'll get a little more serious with the discussion. We kind of work our way into the show uh, slowly but surely. Steady. We're steady. We're just going to say we're steady. <laughs> and when you're when when you're our age, it's good that you're steady. That's what you want. You just want to be, be steady. <laughs> and Love we got, our photos and Mosman are here. Yeah, that's good. good day, and uh, you know, so like I said, um, okay, we're up to nineteen. We are, we're going we're gonna, to, you know, maybe spend the first 10, 15 minutes talking about some other things before we get into the, the images. And uh, I had, you know, some uh, contact with some folks that we haven't heard from in a long time. So I want to share who those folks were and what they're up to. And um, so we will, uh, we will do that in a few more minutes. And we got Albert's in here. Hello, Albert. Uh uh, Albert uh, likes watching my uh, my old camera discussions. I probably put him to sleep, but he he's very he's very polite in his commentary back, so I appreciate it. <laughs> Somebody says oh, I fell asleep and I couldn't wake up. You know, <laughs> I know it isn't good. And we got Chuck is in here. That's great. Hello, Chuck. Good to see you. We will put up the uh, our little caption here. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, come on. I know it's in here somewhere. There we go. There we go. And Terry's in the house. John Ishi. How you doing, John? And, um, well, we got 22. So I guess I'll just I'll start with... <clears throat> The first thing I want to say, uh, obviously, uh, which is uh, appropriate, and, and I want to anyway, as do we all, is to send our continue to sell, send our heartfelt wishes and prayers to uh, our friend Roy Bixby um, for a speedy recovery. I, I don't have any additional information to share with anybody. Um, I did uh, email him yesterday. I did not receive a response. Um, I'm hoping that he's recovering from home at this point, but I really don't know. He could still be in the hospital. I really don't know. So let's just keep him in our thoughts and prayers and wish him the best and hope that he um, can get back, you know, in the chat anyway, uh, at a minimum, as soon as possible. Um, and oh, we got the Gustavo. We got Gustavo sneaking in here from uh, some from some unknown territory. Kansas City. Kansas City. Do we allow Do we allow people from Kansas City to come into the the chat? I don't it's know. Up to you. You know, I mean, I'm not sure. You know, and it's that's a that's a gray area, and I'm not talking my hair color. <laughs> How you doing, Gustavo? <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. he has his headphones on. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, that's good because then he doesn't have to listen to us. So that that's a good advantage. No, I think he wants to listen to us. So we just can't hear him. You can't hear him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff and Leslie, I'll put it here on the uh, on the screen here. Jeff reached out to Roy's wife today, but nothing back. Yeah, I, I yeah. haven't gotten anything either. Yeah. I don't think she knows how to do the uh, email and stuff. So, yeah, and I then, don't. I don't know that. 
you know, she has her own health issues and I don't know that she's fluent or familiar with his account or anything and whether she's even able to look at the emails at all. Uh, I know when she contacted Jeff uh, last, last week, it was via um, text message, was not emails, if, if I recall correctly. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if anybody hears any news at all, please uh, you know, share it with the rest of us. We, we're all concerned. We all, we all want to know that he's uh, well, you know, doing well. Last week, I was chatting with, with a Terry, I think it was Terry, that lives very close to um, Roy. I'm trying to get talk him into going over there. I don't know if he did or not, but we, we may hear later on. Yeah. Yeah, I think Terry's in the chat, or he was earlier, unless he left. I th yeah, he's in the chat. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so Jeff oh. uh, uh, said that uh, he got the message in Facebook. So maybe she's Oh, Facebook. To okay. Yeah. Okay. I stand, I, I, well, I'll say I sit corrected. <laughs> <laughs> and Gustavo, can you, you hear us? Yep. Because we can't hear you yet. Yeah, on the mic or on the, he's probably on his laptop. Yeah, he's in, he's in one of those fancy hotel rooms. It looks pretty nice. He's he's not he's not at he's not at the uh, where they keep the lights on for you place there you know he's not at the Motel Six he's at a better place he's at the Super Eight. <laughs> uh, I want to remind everybody that next Saturday we have Luis Pierre coming back to dis discuss Costa Rica again. Uh, I'm sure he'll, he feels that he probably already covered it pretty well the last time, but he's going to be coming back next Saturday and showing some images. So I'm looking forward to that. So uh, I continue to, uh, yeah, I know, I, I know I'm a bit pushy. I'm pushing on everybody, but I, I really think it's great when we get uh, people in the chat putting together little presentations and little uh, sharing information and, and hey, you know, if, if there's anybody, you know, in the chat that's gone on any fantastic trips to some interesting places and you want to do a mini slideshow and share some of the images and talk about, you know, where you went, I mean, that's that's fine, too. I mean, get other people engaged and, and interested in another location somewhere that may not be too far from where they live. And uh, that's all positive stuff. So uh, we don't want to... Uh, we want people to participate and we want people to feel comfortable um, on the show. Um, hello, Maribel. Good to see you. I see that you're in here. And uh, yes, you could talk. You see, you could talk to Chuck now in the chat because you haven't seen him in a while. So <laughs> we, we, we actually co con uh, connect loved ones on this show, too. You know, you guys didn't know. We're like the love connection, you know. And, and we don't charge nothing for that. That's free. It's all free. <laughs> uh, but the, let's see. Let's see what I got else I got here. Um, for those of you that may occasionally frequent other YouTube channels, uh, Matt Irwin had, a, had a, neat, a neat video not too long ago um, saying hi to my dog who just approached me. Hi, Patches. Patches, are you going to say hi to everybody? Probably not. Uh, Matt Irwin has a new video with an industry insider talking about red cinema cameras and kind of like their history, you know, what they started with, what they've accomplished in the industry in really a really short time when you look at it. Uh, when you're starting from scratch and you're now, you know, one of the leaders in cinematography, uh, that's, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty big deal. Um, and then a little bit of the discussion about Nikon acquiring them and what that may mean to both parties. Uh, um, so it's worth a, worth a look. So check it out if, if you're interested in that. Uh, I know I, I know I commented that I'll, uh, um, 
I'm not I'm not planning to be a cinematographer uh, at all. So the odds of me buying a red camera are are not even slim to none. It's absolutely none. But uh, that doesn't mean I don't appreciate what they've accomplished, and it doesn't mean I don't see benefits, uh, potential benefits for both parties in this deal. So I, I think in the end, it's going to uh, work out well. Um, we're going to have some photos in the photo review from Joe Stroud. I, I got a hold of Joe and we haven't uh, had Joe uh, either, you know, in the panel for a real long time. And uh, he hasn't, you know, been around to really share anything on the photo review in quite a while either, but he is doing well. And he says hi to everybody. He says hi to Chuck and, and everybody else in the gang here. And, um, He's been very busy. He's he his Saturdays are pretty much chewed up because he's doing a lot of concert photography. So he's photographing at a lot of concert events and uh, extremely busy. And that's why we haven't you know seen him in in what seems like forever. Um, but he's doing well, and um, you know the photography is going well. And he did send me a few images to share with everybody tonight, even though more than likely he's, he's working tonight and won't be able to join in or comment, but, uh, it was very nice to hear from him. Um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a while. And, and speaking of being, uh, having been a while, I got, um, I'm going to share some pictures that aren't, aren't part of the photo review. Um, but I, uh, from a certain someone who I'll now mention, I received a phone call from a mutual friend of this whole community that, um, that I think we all think very highly of, and that's uh, Mr. Ron, Ronald pa uh, Pollard. Uh, so I had not heard from Ron in a real, real long time. And uh, uh, Tim and myself uh, would have conversations with him. Uh, you know, occasionally, and it's been a real long time. And, and the same thing, he's been extremely busy. He's been all over the, uh, on the road, all over the country. Uh, I don't think I need to say he's an amazing photographer. I think we know he's an amazing photographer. Um, I would call him an exceptional generalist because he's, you know, he's doing everything from, he's doing everything from weddings to corporate headshots you know, family shoots, individuals, family portraits, PGA tour golf championships, uh, and, and uh, tour events. Uh, he sent me a few photos that I can share with everybody. And he wanted me to say, and here's how he worded it. He says, say, tell everybody in the neighborhood that I miss them. And I say, hello. He says the word community gets overused too much. So he wanted me to use the word neighborhood. <laughs> Instead of photographic community, he wanted me to say photographic neighborhood. So we're now in the neighborhood. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he's been, he took some college basketball images uh, for ESPN uh, recently He's been doing speaking and photography teaching engagements, and he is just constantly, you know, as, as he said to me, he says, you know, you're, it's, when you're making a living as a photographer, you know, everybody may, might say, oh, I wish I could do that. You may or may not wish because this guy is, his feet are never on the ground too long. I mean, he's flying from diff to different locations, doing different things always planning his next adventure and uh it's not easy to support your family as a photographer because you know you're only you're only as good as your last gig and um uh, and you have to be able to be you're not just a photographer when you're when you're in your own business you know you're you're you're, you're your own marketing person you're your you're your own accountant uh business manager and everything all rolled into one so uh very difficult job to earn a living in, but he, he does exceptional work. And um, so I just want to tip my hat to him. And um, he does, he says he does stop by 
and checks out the shows. Not always, you know, when we're on live or whatever, but he does pop in and, and look at what we're up to and what we're talking about. And he is very supportive of all of us in the, uh, in the neighborhood slash community. <laughs> uh, he wanted to say uh, a shout out to Chuck. Uh, hello to Chuck and, um, and a hello to Roy as well. Um, he uh, was kind of surprised with the, with the situation with Roy. And so I'm going to, I'm going to send, you know, he's just a class act in my opinion. So I appreciate him spending the time to give me a, give me a phone call. Uh, it's been a long time and, and I love talking to him. He's just, he's just as, <clears throat> he's just a polished, well-heeled, uh, kind person, uh, you know, top notch guy, top notch guy. So he sent me a few images to share with everybody. So before we start the photo review, I'll, um, give me a second to, uh, I will bring up a few of the shots, share a few of the shots that he sent me. Um, Gustavo, is your mic working? Yeah. No, oh. I, I can't hear a thing. Yeah, yeah it ends up on your screen. <laughs> so I'm going to go into the uh, share mode. Give me a give me a minute here. I've had a long day already, and we're just starting. I've been up since like quarter to five this morning. Mm. Um, so. We will start oh, with we will start with testing testing a basketball. We hear you say testing, Gustavo. We hear you saying testing. We can hear you. We can hear you. So here's one of, one of two one of two college basketball images that he uh, sent me <laughs> for that he shot for ESPN. Wow. Uh, so I will bring up another one. Same teams. Yeah, he's really he's he's expanded. He's he's constantly expanding his genres. You know what I'm saying? So he really is a generalist now because he's doing he's doing everything now. He isn't. He isn't getting into into wildlife bird photography yet, but I mean, in terms of like portraits and weddings and you know corporate stuff and and uh, sports, you know, getting you know between golf and basketball. So his his wings are spread pretty pretty far, if you know what I'm saying. Um, then he let's see, bring up. Uh, this is him at a uh, a seminar, something he was involved with. So there's there's preacher Ron, preaching <laughs> preaching to the choir, He's preaching to the choir. He's not showing the singers, but they're back there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so then we got, uh, I think, two more here. Um, this is uh, this is a group of people that he uh, was doing a class with, where he was instructing, and he's got his Z8 hat on. So he is a he is appropriately he's got his Nikon shirt and his Z8 hat on. So he is he is properly dressed for the occasion. So, Ron, you're you're looking snappy, my friend. You're looking, you're looking sharp. And don't you hate it when a guy always looks like he's like thirty years old, and you know he's not thirty <laughs> years old. Exactly. Yeah. I don't like people that look like that. <laughs> that look that good. <laughs> you're supposed to look like the rest of us. <laughs> oh God, he's a he's a blessing in disguise. Let me tell you. Um, the last. 
uh, yeah, the last image is he got hired by Netflix to take a photo of a comedian that's going to be doing a special on Net Netflix. So they used his image for their advertising for this future um, show that's going to come on. I, I, it may be on now. I really don't know. But uh, so this is Ron's Ron's photo. So that's cool. So like I said, he's he's got his toes dipped in the water in a lot of different ponds. A lot of different ponds. So, Ron, we wish you well, my friend. Uh, we wish, uh, you know, someday, someday if you get a day off and your wife doesn't say, hey, you got to pay attention to me. I never see you anymore. And she says, do what you want, then come visit on the show for an hour or so and uh, fill us in on everything going on uh, with you because it looks like you're having a heck of a time and you're being extremely, extremely busy. Just to say hello, correct? Just to say hello, man. Just stop by okay. and say hello. So I'm going to I gotta get rid of the images on my screen here that I was sharing, and then I got to bring up the photo review screen and uh, let's see we have any, we have anybody in the wings that I don't see the waiting to come in because I don't know if the the first the first uh, the first images were going to be from Joey but if he's not here I'm going to skip them I will skip him and move on. Um, That'll teach him for being late. Yeah, so <laughs> well, he, he's either late with the photos or he's late himself. Or he's taking pictures with his lens cap on. <laughs> Those pictures are easier to edit. Well, yeah, yeah. You just, you just think, oh, man, I, I had my... I didn't have my lens open far enough. <laughs> uh, let me see if we're going to get ready here to start sharing the images because we do have quite a few. And I'm just going to check my notes here. I always have lots of notes. Oh, I, I will mention this one for David because David is in the process of doing this. Uh, in today's Nikon rumors, they had a, a neat picture and extremely brief verbiage uh, talking about a person named that goes by uh, Cam Mackery, Cam Mackey, who uh, sanded the knobs on his Nikon ZF, and it looks great. I mean, I think Nikon should offer brass knobs as an option when you order the camera personally, but if you want to see one that's completely done and see how it looks, Go on Nikon Rumors and check it out. And then we're going to hold David to that standard when he's done with his, and we're going to do a comparison. <laughs> but it came out good. It looks really neat. I mean, it, it, think about it. They could upcharge 100 bucks for the camera or, or, or whatever, and it actually saves them money because they don't have to paint them. You know no, what I mean? It would be more expensive. You got to put a clear on it or something, you know. Yeah. But uh, – you still have to paint the dials, correct, Dave? Put the yeah, color they, of the they still got to paint the dials, right? But right yeah. now, the way they paint the dial, they probably spin it and spray it at the same time. Yeah. And and what you'd have to do is mask it. You know, so it'll actually be harder to do. Unless they just put a sticker on the top. You know, but they, they're not into that. No, no. But the um yeah he only did the top he didn't do the no top. he just did the they just did the top yeah yeah um so we're gonna we're gonna start off I'm gonna bring up I gotta bring up my uh, my cheat sheet so I know whose photos I'm looking at here and we're gonna bring up the photo review. And let's see, I just want to make sure I didn't. Uh... Let's 
if I missed anybody here. I don't think so. I think we, so we're going to, okay, give me a second here. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, I got to, wait a minute, I got to. Yeah, this would, have, this would have been uh, this would have been Joey's image, but I'm going to skip over his images and I'm going to jump to the next uh, party here. Um, so this, uh, let me give me a second. I got to get my laptop up and running. Michael, it's probably Michael. He was mentioned to me the other day about scrub jays. Florida yes, scrub it's, Yes, it's a scrub jay. He says a Florida scrub jay. He, this is Michael Dries, um, Z8 with the 600 PF lens, uh, f6.3, one one thousandth of a second, ISO 360. He says uh, these birds are uh, on the endangered species list due to habitat loss. The leg bands are used to study and monitor the individual birds. They're only found in the state of Florida. It says this image was captured during a session with Ray Hennessy, one of his photograph, uh, one of his photography mentors. He says, check him out on YouTube and Instagram. He produces an excellent podcast on wildlife photography. He says, sorry for the plug, but he's a great photographer and an excellent teacher. Um, I need to reopen my. Not seeing that's funny. It's funny. I'm seeing the uh, I'm seeing the chat on my laptop, but I'm not seeing any any of the image um, from the show. So I got to reload here. There we go. So, so Michael, bear with you me. Get a, uh, Michael, do you get a, a kind of uh, in the public domain access to the the code of the banding that tells you which individual this is, or that's fun to try to figure out the exact individual that you photograph. So I'm gonna go to his next photo, which is also, geez, sorry about that. I keep on, I gotta get into develop mode here in, in Lightroom, so I'm not, I'm in the library mode. I sneeze and I go 20 shots ahead. Um, ah. This is his second photo, and this is the uh, a scrub jay uh, scrub jay pair. He says in a mating ritual. And this is with the Z8 as well, with the 600 wide open, one eight hundredth of a second ISO 800. He says he's photographing a lone bird when all of a sudden another one swooped in, and the and the behavior behavior commenced. Like, will you share your nugget of food with me? And well, let's make a. Let's make this a little bit uh, beautifully, uh, a nice soft background, nice colors in the background, beautifully, uh, incredibly sharp. Uh, the birds are incredibly sharp. You get all the and detail. The light, and both of them are good, correct? So yes. early, early in the yeah. morning or late in the afternoon, beautiful light. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Wonderful, John. Now his... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't complain when you get shots like the like these. Yeah, exactly. Um, his his third shot was uh, is coming up here. Ooh, and love the plumage. You know, love that look uh, of a great egret. Uh, same same uh, body, same camera body, same lens, wide open. One thirty-two hundredth of a second at ISO three hundred and sixty. You know, so nope, sure. and that's what's nice when you get when you get enough light. You know, then you can. What I like, what's nice, and some people would say, "Well, you don't have to be at ISO thirty-two hundredth of a second for the shot." But the thing is, when you're doing nature shots, and you never know when they're going to take off. If you got good light, and in this case, he's at. 32 hundredth of a second at ISO 360. So he's already at a very low ISO, you know, more than good enough by any uh, way, shape, or form. 
And he has the uh -huh. advantage of being able to crank up the shutter speed so that if that bird did decide to take off, he's going to be able to get it. You know, so something you have to think about uh, when you're setting up for your for your images. Um, so he says this egret performed this courtship display on a regular basis. He picked this image because it shows the eye at a nice angle towards the viewer. Um, he used a high shutter speed because the movements happened quickly. And he had, and like, as he says, as I just said, without even reading this yet, he had ample light. So he had more than yeah. enough light to be able to do that. Um, so another, another very, very nice image. Uh, and yes, you mentioned multiple times when photographing this, you know, how easy to blow out the highlights, right? And this seemed to be perfectly exposed for the white. Right? Yep. Yep. And this is where if you have a, and I'm sure it's, a, in, I don't have a Z8, I have a Z9, but I think they're the same and you should have, what does help, I have used it at times, not all the time, I'll be honest, I don't use it all the time, I don't always think of it, I mean, I use my exposure compensation a lot, so I'll, you know, sometimes I'll underexpose, I'll underexpose and bring up, you know, the greens, let's say, after the fact to make sure I don't blow out the white of the bird, but you do have a highlight, a highlight metering function in your camera that does help does help uh, reduce blowing out the highlights if you have predominantly white birds in your image. So it's something that if you've never tried it, you might want to consider trying it at least once and experiment with it and see, you know, if it works for you, it may, it may not, it may not. You may just say, I like shooting manual. I'll just do it my own way. And it does the same thing. And I'm used to it that way anyway, so on and so forth. But uh, now his, uh, his last image here is, um, he says this, uh, this is with the Nikon Z6 with the 24 to 120 F4. Uh, at f4 ISO 12 uh, 1/250th of a second at uh, ISO 100 and he was uh, zoomed in at 68 okay. millimeters so he says the gentleman in this photo is chef Jerome Brown of the old school diner near Townsend Georgia he says his small diner on a dusty road in the low country has attracted numerous celebrities and athletes including Ben Affleck who is a close friend he is one of the most interesting personalities he's met on the road. His trusty companion is named Maxine. <laughs> so bear photography or portrait photography? What is it? <laughs> you can do both. Well, that's right. You know, he, he didn't want to he, he didn't want to go full portrait mode. So he had to have the bird in there, I guess. <laughs> well, the bird's got his head turned, you know, so. Yeah, the bird the bird has the eye in the right spot, you know. I mean, it, it, it's and and the guy and the, and uh, Jerome doesn't look like he's any in any pain, so those claws aren't making their way through the shirt. <laughs> so that's a good thing. But uh, so that that's everything from Michael Dries. So thank you, Michael. Nice job on all these images. We appreciate you taking the time to send them in to everybody. Great shots, Michael. Indeed. And um, let's see. And I see, I'm um, just going to look at the chat quick here. We got the uh, drunk wedding photographers in with us. So hello to you, my friend. We got uh, Mookie MC is in the mm -hmm. house. We got, um, you know, and, and Michael's commenting here in the chat, which is great. And uh, thank you so much for sending these in. I, I do find great pleasure in sharing everybody's work uh, once a month. Um, so the um, Luis Piera, uh, who I mentioned earlier, if those of you that weren't here, will be doing a Costa Rica, another Costa Rica talk next Saturday and some photos to share with us. Um, so please show up for that. And um, so he, he sent in a few images anyway, he sent in two pictures. He says he's really busy right now. They're a few years old, uh, pictures that he took in Europe from two species. He says that he believes we've not seen on the show before. 
So we will bring up the first image. And this is not something that you want to have, that you want to see laying next to you when you're in bed at the hotel. <laughs> so this is an alpine newt from his own backyard in the Netherlands. This is with a oh. Nikon 7100 with a Tokina 100 millimeter uh, lens, F10, 1 320th of a second at ISO 400. So that's a, I guess it's, it's you know, obviously it's a, uh, it's kind of like looking through the, the, the mirrors on your car where it says objects may appear larger than they are or something. And I'm sure this, that this new is not as large as it appears to our eyes, sure. but uh, it's, it's interesting. I like the coloration of it. You know, uh, Luis does, does, a, does a great uh, uh, photography of, of reptiles and amphibians. Yeah. Yeah. And he's doing everything right. You know, he's at the, you know, he, he's at the right level with the shot and you got, you know, a little bit of the foreground element blurry. And then you have, you got the, a little of the foreground blurry and the background blurry. And you got that thin strip of area that's in focus, uh, which in, encompasses the, the plant life there and, and a good portion of the, uh, of the new, I mean, it's, uh, it's just the way you want it to do. It's just the way you want it to come out. Yeah, I, I don't see him here, but it would be nice to ask him this week if he used a little bit of uh, uh, peeling flash photography on this macro here. Yeah, well, maybe we could. Uh... Yeah, the light looks like it's coming from the left. Well, maybe we can. Let's see here. No, maybe I'm trying but, to but see. It looks, it, looks, uh, it looks fantastic. So for a macro, you, and we know how difficult it is. I was just trying to see if we could see the flash in the eyeball. Looks good. <laughs> but yeah. All right. A lot of detail. You can see now that you zoom in there. Fantastic detail at the head. Great, great job, Luis. Yep. So that was his first submission. And then he, sent, he did send in a... Um, he did send in a second shot, and uh, this is the uh, non-breeding male snow bunting, northern Netherlands by the coast. Um, yeah, we have what they call the painted buntings that come down here to Myrtle, that are here in Myrtle Beach, which are a very color, probably one of our more colorful birds that we get down here. That people, that people will actually fly here to see those birds. Um, this is, this was taken with a Nikon D500, a 200 to 500 millimeter zoom at 480 millimeters, F6.3, one one thousandth of a second. He says, due to the strong wind, ISO 360. And once again, you know, just the way you want it to be, you know, you're at ground level, you got a little bit of the foreground blurry, the bird is tack sharp and the background is, is nice and smooth and dissolved. So exactly That's what you probably a, a winter visitor in the Netherlands because these are Arctic buntings. Uh, right? So beautiful capture, interesting bird for sure. Yeah. And uh, so excuse me if I'm pausing a little bit here. I have a whining dog waiting for her tennis ball. <laughs> It's tough when you have to throw a ball and click a mouse and talk all at the same time. I'm, I'm usually not a chew gum and walk at the same time person, but when I do the show, I got to do at least three things at the same time. <clears throat> but um, so that's what he was able to, you know, slip in during his busy schedule. Uh, so we appreciate it, Luis. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you. Uh, Oh, actually, he's got, uh, let me see if he's got more. He's got one more picture. I'm sorry. He's got three pictures. So we got one more to look at that we will put on the screen here. Uh, oh, this is a, a wimbrel. Uh, uh -huh. They're cool. They got that curved, long beak. Um, he took this in the southern Pacific coast um, with the Z8, with the 180 to 600 zoom at 460 millimeters. 
wide open, f6.3, one six hundredth of a second, ISO 320. He says he held the camera down low and he, and he used the flip screen on the back of the camera so that he could, you know, lower the camera. Um, and once again, you know, I mean, he, he's very consistent. You know, you got the you got some waves in the front or some water ripple in the front that's blurry. You got a, a strip that's 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 sharp, you know, with that underneath that uh, tree branch. Uh, along with the tree and the bird, and then everything beyond that just dissolves and melts away. I mean, it's, it's and, and, it, and it, it, yeah, and it works having the bird. Now, here's where you know you could say uh, we always say uh, like Roy would Roy our friend Roy would say the heck with the rule of thirds. You know, oh here here you go. Okay, this isn't the rule of thirds. You got the bird in the center of the image, and it works perfect. Uh, right? He said, good 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 example of. You know, you don't have to zoom in on the bird, right? You, this is a, a animal in the landscape, and the log makes the whole picture. I mean, you, how can you compose different with the, with the log? You have to compose that with the log and the tree on the on the left side. Yeah, a beautiful, beautiful image. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And he and he doesn't he doesn't take flattery well. You know, he says, "Well, I don't really. <laughs> I'm not. I'm more of a." Uh, a spotter than a photographer. Well, I will, I will argue with you that you are uh, an extremely good photographer and don't sell your stone. Don't talk like that. We won't, we won't put up with it. You're a very, you're an excellent photographer. So uh, take credit, take credit where credit is due. And so now that's his last image. So we will move on to our next candidate who uh, give me a second to, Take a swig of uh, diet soda here to keep awake. My voice puts myself to sleep sometimes. I have to take a stimulant here. <laughs> so this is from um, Bob, our photos, Bob Repper. Um, the photos that you're going to see here are all taken with the Nikon Z8. And the two to five hundred millimeter zoom, and this is an oyster catcher um, that's uh, pulling up some, you know, a, a portion of an oyster, and this is in the um, in the Merle's Inlet area of South Carolina. And uh, both him and I, uh, you know, we shoot together a lot, so you know, I have some images uh, of these of these fellas um, in a in a video that I did recently not too long ago and uh, they are so fun to watch and it, it's uh, I think on this day we may have seen seven of them flying together uh, right around when the sun just just poked up when the sun rose and then they kind of split off and they kind of have their own turf you know so you have a you have a long uh, walkway, um, I guess we'll, we can call it a pier, um, and you walk to the end of it, and you have the marsh on each side of the pier, obviously, and these oyster catchers, um, a pair of oyster catchers are either ma are mating and feeding on one side of the pier or the other, and once they get into that mating part, they are not very friendly to any other oyster catchers that may fly into their uh, zone. I'll just word it as a zone, and they will uh, fly after them and chase them off. Um, so in this case, I don't see any indications that they've, that no one is sitting on a nest yet because they alternate. You know, one will sit on the nest during the day, one will sit the other, one will sit on the nest during the nighttime, but I don't see any nests yet, but uh, it is fun to watch them them feed. They're very uh, very efficient, very efficient. And, and yes, this uh, this will be a low tide, correct? Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, not I mean not extreme low tide, but enough know. to expose the oysters. Yeah, I mean they can see them through the water, and I mean and they'll and they'll almost they'll almost look like a. Um, their head will go up and down like like someone's using a jackhammer. I mean, they're, they're, you'll just see the motion up and down real quick, and uh, and sometimes they'll you know they'll do that for a few seconds. That the head will be and the the beak will be drilling it, look like it's drilling in the water, 
and then it pops up and they don't have anything. Then they go back and they do it, you know, again. Sometimes it takes three tries, and then all of a sudden they come up with the they come up with the meat because they got you got two they you have they they have two different feeding habits. They've got some of the oyster catchers like to wait until the oyster opens up its shell and then they sneak in and they pull out the innards before it closes the shell. And then there's others that basically do a hammer effect and they just beat up on the shell until they, they crack it open and then they pull out the insides a little bit at a time. So all the ones that we saw were the hammerers. They were the ones always hammering on the shells, trying to break through and get out the, uh, get out the food. So then we got uh, his next shot is a wonderful bald eagle. And this was, this was actually uh, walking Walking, turning around from the end of the pier and walking back towards a parking lot area because that, that pier, the opposite side of the pier is another walkway, which is loaded with restaurants and, and bars and that type of thing. So yeah. it's the uh, called the Merle's Inlet Marsh Walk. So on one side, you have a walkway. Um, and you can rent jet skis or kayaks or go on um, uh, tour boats, that type of stuff, or, um, you know, go on a fishing boat to go out fishing for the day. So you can, you can do all that stuff from that area, and it's loaded with restaurants and bars. And uh, then you have the longer pier that goes out, um, which we were on to see the oyster catchers, and uh, walking back. In the distance, we saw this uh, eagle in the tree and uh, got some nice shots of it. I mean, I never complain about an eagle shot because uh, we don't we don't we don't get them or have them in the quantities that uh, I think when I was talking to uh, David Moots came and came and stopped by and visited me. And I, I showed you some pictures of uh, me and him together and and, uh, and him and his wife and he lives in Kansas and he says it's tons of Eagles. There's so many Eagles there that he doesn't even take Eagle pictures anymore. He's got so many Eagle pictures. So I don't have that problem. So when, when, when Bob or I see an Eagle, we get excited because we don't see them that often. And, and, and if we do, they're usually not very close. <laughs> they're not very close. <clears throat> so nice job, Bob. And then uh, his next image is, I think I got them out of order here. No, no, I'm good. The next one is of a uh, great, um, I either typed it wrong or he had typed it wrong because it's it's not a great e egret. It's a great blue heron that uh, has itself a nice uh, meal. And this is on the, the marsh side uh, because fish that big are no longer on the pond side. And you don't want to get me going on that. You know how I feel about that. Um, but it's... Uh, it's on the marsh side where you can get some real food, and that, that's a good size. Uh, looks like a mullet. Good size fish. What and I think he, about the great blue eagles is how big fish or all the things they can eat. I mean, you you always amazed that when you see them eating that they can swallow such a big prey. Right? Yeah, and and what's interesting when you're with the and and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, uh, Gustavo. Is it's what's interesting with them is that they they'll dip their food item in the water a lot, you know, basically to lubricate it, make it easier to go down their throat. So they'll do a lot of they'll do a lot of dipping uh, of of their food item, and then uh, I think Bob, I think he has a short that he did that's on his channel, showing mm. um, it swallowing this fish. And um, believe me, that was that was like you said that that was a good sized fish to have to try to swallow. Um, and then his last image that he sent in um, was uh, he called it "Thinking Ahead Towards Thanksgiving." We were at the Brook Green Gardens, which is a 
combination uh, botanical gardens and a world-renowned um, center for sculptures, uh, both uh, sculptures that are that are really gigantic that are that are out on the property outside, and then they have quite a few buildings where they have um, sculptures uh, inside some of the facility, some of the buildings as well. So, um, and and a, and a lot of nice flowers, and we've managed to get uh, occasionally. Uh, nesting owls there. Uh, we've gotten um, nesting, uh, let's see, uh, red-tailed hawks. Uh, they have one or two um, sand cranes, sandhill cranes there. Uh, so you never know what you're going to see. So, and like I said, blue, uh, beautiful uh, flowers uh, as well. And if you're into sculptures, then that's, then that's a bonus. But uh, he, got a, he got a picture of this uh, wonderful <laughs> food item, what we consider a food item. <laughs> um, this, guy, this guy was funny because he basically patches you're being a pain. I'm going to send you downstairs. Um, this, uh, this fellow was interesting because he would be mar He would march from right to left and then he would just turn around and he'd march from left to right. And then he'd turn around and go right to left. He was just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, uh, earlier, um, prior to these shots, he was chasing some of the females around a tree. Um, and these are all, these are wild birds. These are not, they're not fenced in anywhere. You never know what area of this um, park you're going to, where you may see them. You may, you could be there all day and not see one or any of them at all. And uh, on this particular day, we were looking for the owl nest and all of a sudden a whole bunch of turkeys just flew in and went over the water and landed literally, you know, maybe 50 yards away from us. And so you never know what you're going to see, what's going to show up. It's, it's, well, that's what makes what we do uh, fun, <laughs> you know. These turkeys, when they are in display mode like that, they can be quite feisty. You know? I mean, yeah, they, they can go after you and then you have to, if you show them some fear, they will chase you. They're, and, and, and I hate to say it, they're, um, <laughs> you, you look, when you look at the um, when you look at the head, give me a oh, second right. here. When you look at the head, they are not pretty looking birds. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are not. They just. I, I. I don't know. That's not a bird you bring home the mother. You know what I mean? They're not very pretty <laughs> looking. So I think I know why we eat them because they're they're too ugly to look at, but they taste good. As they, uh... <laughs> and and, the, and those blobs go in and out and different colors. I mean, uh, they put a good they put a good show. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. So I believe I we... that, that's it from Bob. So Bob, we thank you for uh, sending in those pictures as always. And and for the first time in a long time, you weren't first tonight. So you actually had to. I'm probably approaching your bedtime right now. So, <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, uh, Jeffrey, uh, I think uh, Joe Joey was in the chat. So, in case you want, yeah, to but he's to eating right now. Ah, he's okay. eating right now. Okay, Joey, your pictures were first, and they were so bad we just decided to skip over them. <laughs> uh, no, I'm only kidding, Joey. We we. We just skipped over them because we didn't see you and, and you weren't here yet. So we're going to come back to you when you come on the panel. We'll go back and we'll look at your images uh, because you were the first one to have them because you sent them, I believe, the same day as our at the at, as the end of our last uh, show photo review that we did. So uh, you were uh, first on the list. Uh, now we'll move on here. I got a photo from. 
I could be wrong, but I think it's someone that we've never had uh, on the show before. So he sent in one image, and um, he said, "And he said, I'll, I'll I'll read the words first here." He says, "I am a beginner, and learning from listening to the crew." So I guess we're are we the crew or are we Motley Crew? Which are we? Uh, so he says, "This is my submission of a panning capture." So he took a very nice panning. Uh, shot here wow i think he did a good job uh he took it with his uh nikon zf using the 28 millimeter z lens iso 100 f10 130 130th of a second now that's really good that that subject is as sharp as it is he panned very well for that subject to be as sharp at 130th of a second so you did a very very yep of the person what's that What's the name uh, of the person, person? is uh, Israel Macario. Okay. Israel Macario. So um, I believe you're new to the show, and we welcome you, and we appreciate you sending in an image, and you did a very good job. And it, the, the the color, the color from the window treatments, uh, you know, adds some interest to the photo. Uh, quite a bit, and like I said, I think you did a great job because uh, one thirty, you panned it perfect. Because that guy on that scooter is uh, is tack sharp at one thirtieth of a second. So you did a great job, and uh, so next month, try to send us more than one image because uh, one is good, two is better. <laughs> For sure. Did he mention but, where he took the photo? Or, or the no, he didn't, he didn't mention where. I don't know if he's in the chat or not. Probably not. He probably is in a different time zone, I think. So he may not be on uh, in the chat. Yeah, it's a good it's, shot. It's Yes, he did a good job. It, it takes practice to be good at these. Yeah. And he left a lot of space on the right side, correct? Yeah, the, yeah. Which is good for this type of photo. So we insinuate the movement and also leave the the subject to to have some space on the right. Right. You want normally normally you you whether well even if it's a bird with his head turned one way or the other, you try to exactly. you try to put the most space in the direction that the person person or subject is is either looking at or. <laughs> in this case, driving towards, right? You want to have more space exactly. to the right. And he's exactly. pretty much a third, you know, maybe a little bit past a third of the way in on, on the image, but he, you know, he pretty much followed the rule of thirds on this one for the most part. Exactly. And, and and the rule does work, you know. I don't knock the exactly. rule, but you, but you just don't want to be locked into it all the time. You got to be willing to, sometimes an image looks better when when your subject is in the middle of the picture, like we saw with Luis's picture of the Wimbro on the log. You know, that exactly. looked perfect the way he did that. Uh, so good job. Um, good job, Israel. And we hope to see you again. Uh, well, even on a non-photo of the week uh, episode, come on and join the show if you can, or hopefully you get to watch it uh, when it's convenient for you. Um, our next... Uh, Let's see. Let me just look at the chat quickly here. I'm trying to be diligent. I guess back back away's Bob was doing his turkey impression. Gobble gobble. <laughs> <laughs> now you got you gotta get on. You gotta come on live, Bob, and you gotta go. Now I used to be able to do a turkey pretty good. I don't know if I'm gonna blow it here or not. I'll try it. <clears throat> <laughs> there's my there's my turkey impression. That's pretty good, Jeff. You know, hey, you know, I'm just a big turkey. What can I say? Uh, so the next images are from uh, our friend Jeff Sluter, uh, Jeff and Leslie. And let me bring up his first image. Oh, beautiful! And he gets he always, wow. Jeff. I mean, I don't, you know, you. I never get good lighting, man. When when I, all that, all my pileated woodpeckers like to be in the dark. Um, I sometimes I get lucky, but man, they like to they like to show up when it's way too early in the morning and there's no light in the tree on the trees at all. So I'm jealous. You know, you gotta 
very nice, very nice image here of a male pileated woodpecker. Uh, this is with his uh, this is with his Canon EOS R7, um, f 7one of a second, ISO 250. Jeff, I didn't write down what lens this one was for this shot. I know your next shot was a macro lens, but I'm not sure what you used for this one, but. If you remember, you can uh, chime in in the chat. Um, Jeff's next uh, image that he sent in is a, uh, this was cool because I've seen these in, oh, I think I took a picture of one, a one that's similar to this. It might be the same one. A uh, crab spider hanging on the inside of a daffodil flower. I don't and this is with the 100 millimeter macro, 1 640th of a second, f 4.5, ISO 800. So these crab spiders will hide in the in the flowers, and they will actually uh, eat a bee if a bee came in to pollinate, or you know how you get some of those flies that pollinate as well that look like bees, but they're actually flies and other kinds of insects. And the crab is just sitting there waiting for a meal, waiting, waiting for a meal. And I love that they take, um, and Jeff knows that, uh, they take the color of the flower where they sit. They are uh, really, really well camouflaged. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not, <clears throat> I had gotten a, a, a spider, uh, not the, it's not the same one as this, but it was a, it might have been a, a family member or, or, or related to this one. It was different coloration, but uh, it was just, I was looking at, uh, it wasn't an individual like flower, but on a, on a, it was like a huge bush. And I don't even know why I, I was just scanning all the petals on the bush and I found the, found the spider there. And it's like, they're really, really hard to find. They're really hard to find. You have to make a conscious effort to say, you know, I know that there's one in here somewhere, and you're and you're going to find exactly. it. And you're going to look for it. You know. Uh, so very, very good shot. Um, his uh, his next image is um, the uh, is called. This is a a bloodroot flower. Uh, it says these uh, these are one of the very early spring blooming wildflowers, and it's called a blood root because if one breaks the root, it has red blood that comes out of it. Ooh. Ew! That's like you sure this isn't like one of those like an alien movie where the <laughs> it's like invasion of the body snatchers type of thing. Uh, but he says he says yeah he says that that's he knows that because about forty years ago he was foolish enough to do it regretted killing that flower ever since. <laughs> um, once again, the, the Canon EOS R7, 1 to 500 millimeter lens, uh, 1 640th of a second, F7.1 and minus 0.7 EV. Just zooming a little bit, I mean, we know that Jeff is a great uh, wildflower photographer. So so that, that the Greek part, that's a, uh, the leaf or part of the body of the wow okay so that's where the stem beautiful yeah it's the stem is yeah right near exactly but you know it's interesting that you know the definition in the leaf it looks like it looks like you know arteries or veins you know they are. veins or veins going out into the leaf well they serve the same purpose yeah yeah See, he shot it from the car. <laughs> Didn't even have to step out of the car. Or a window, yeah. <laughs> oh, come Thank on. You. You, you you had it, Jeff, you had an opportunity to just say how you had to walk ah. 10 miles to find this plant. And it, oh. it took you forever to get there. And, and then you say you shot it from your car. Oh, come on. Well, he could have said he, sh he traveled for three hours. Yeah. To get the shot. <laughs> So thank you, Jeff and Leslie, sending in these uh, wonderful shots once again. Um, give me a second here to deal with the, the four-legged friend here. Uh, patches are driving me nuts, man. Why can't you let mommy play with you once in a while? Jeez. <laughs> I 
it going to be? She's so attached to me. It's got to be me, 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 me all the time. So um, hopefully I have these right in the right order. And Anita, these are your shots. Uh, Anita Stewart, these are your shots coming up. And hopefully I have them in the correct order. Um, so I will bring up her first image. And then I believe that she says this is a Bonaventura with the Z6 two with a 24 to 70 f4 s at f9 one fifteen hundredth of a second iso 400 zoomed to 26 millimeters this is one of the the older areas there and uh, you see how they make use of the land and uh, okay. not there's not much flat ground no I mean, now, how many, I mean, it doesn't appear that there's really that many houses up there. No, <laughs> no, there isn't. You know, and uh, they, they have roads that go up there and they go back and forth and back and forth. And and it's, uh, <clears throat> I don't know how they got up there originally, but, but uh, okay. it, it's uh, only the, the wider roads have a center line on them. Most roads are too narrow for a center line. <laughs> thought i heard a beep do we got someone in the uh waiting room here let me check yes we got joey in the waiting room here i thought i heard i thought i heard a beep figures every time i hear a beep it's like you know every time you hear a beep you know it's a photographer <laughs> I'm gonna have a beeping great time with you guys tonight. How y'all doing? Beeping, beeping great time. Um, I'll give me a second to get back to my. From what I see on my screen, so hello, it Joe. Like How you doing, play, David? Say again, Gustavo. It, uh, you want to meet? It looks like a, a great place to visit. Oh, it, it was a really interesting place. She's in Silver Lake tonight, and I'm in Calgary, so we're, we're an hour and a half okay. apart. So is, this, there. so is this housing, the way we're seeing this, like you said, with just a little strip going in a, in a, in a crease, you know, in the mountains type of thing, is it like, okay, so you got this image here, and then if you go a mile down the road, you have the same kind of thing, or do you eventually well, hit that ground? Her, her pictures go together, so you can go to the second one. Okay. And then it gives you a better idea. Yeah. So the next one is, oh, I'm going to let, let you pronounce that one. So you guys give me big words. I don't, I'm not a big word kind of guy. <laughs> well, I, I figured uh, if they're written down, Gustavo would straighten us out. And, uh, <laughs> oh, fa Faja da, Faja da Ovella. I have no idea. But anyway, th th this is, um, on that's, the, how I'm, that's how I'm saying it. I'm probably, you know, screwing it up. But yeah, F A F A G A D A O V E L H A Faja da Ovella. I guess I don't know. Uh, sad uh, that we don't have Luis today because he probably will know how to pronounce it perfectly since he, he's Portuguese. But uh, yeah. So, so what so are those a, like uh, cultivated terraces in the in the? Yeah, land? yeah. That's what it is. It's um. Some of these are still cultivated and some of them aren't. Just certain places around there, they have bananas growing everywhere. Well, it's volcanic soil, correct? Yeah. So this must be very fertile. Yeah. And this is um, F11. Um, wow. F11 with 60th of a second, ISO 100 at 33.5 millimeters. So I'm assuming the composition of the green and the and the blue always make for a good composition. Yeah, and she then, she shot rural and I shot urban. <laughs> so for for the for the for the photo review. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna go through Anita's and then we're gonna do David's and then I'm gonna go back and to the beginning and show Joey's because I don't know how long Joe's gonna be able to hang around. So we and then sure we get all we, the Canadians sorted out. We, yeah, and then we get all the Canadians <laughs> done <laughs> with and out of here. They can all they can all stay <laughs> sorry. They can all sorry. stay in Canada. 
so here's the <clears throat> here's our next shot, and this one you can see it, the this, one. This yeah, cool. this gives you an idea about Oof. how crooked that the roads are. Man, and, and, and this doesn't include the, the, the tunnels that were involved uh, where they go through the mountains just so they can make these turns. Wow. But, Imagine uh, somebody saying, hey, we need to retar these roads. <laughs> well, we, have any, do we have, have any volunteers. <laughs> they, they don't have any freeze thaws there, so so they're okay that way. But... but uh, you know, and, and and if the curve isn't a hairpin, there's no curve sign. <laughs> yeah. and we got we got Luke is in the chat now, so hello to Luke, real Nike on lover. Yeah, Joe Joe's beeping off again. Yeah, <laughs> I would never do such a thing. And this one, <laughs> she uh, she titled this uh, Lombardo Malario Malero yeah. Lombardo Malero. Yeah. Uh, F9, 1 40th of a second, ISO 200, 24 millimeters. But there, there's probably close, or there's over 500 meters from where Anita was standing down to the water. And, and the wow. road just goes back and forth and back and forth. And, Love yeah. those photos. <clears throat> Anita, very well done. Uh, the kind of look of the chasm from this perspective is always very attractive. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of neat. You know, eventually to the far right, you see where the you see where things somewhat flatten out at the base. You know, you got a lot more houses. Exactly. Yeah, it it's a little bit flat some places, but there's yeah. not much flat anywhere. Yeah. Now, David, we're going to have your images. You sent in four images. Yeah, Nita has so, one more, doesn't she? Uh. Da, 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 da. Well, let's see. Let's see. Maybe this one's hers too. Yeah, this one's hers too. Okay, I got I got the descriptions wrong. I I was my this this one is the uh, Lombardo Molero. The one before was oh forget it. I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll talk to this one a bit. It is that the the wider road? It was built with EU money, and it actually has the center line. That's the one down the center. The one to the left, it was the, the, the original road, and <clears throat> it wouldn't be wide enough to have the center line. But uh, it's uh, to, to get across the, the island, the, which is about 30 kilometers, is that uh, Europe put in an awful lot of money, and some of these tunnels are in excess of three kilometers long going wow. through the mountains. So that's so you don't go up and down so far. You know, but they, they, they still have vertical and horizontal curves in the tunnels. So the tunnels weren't straight. So I'm assuming uh, that these roads are, are strictly for very small cars. Oh, and buses. They, they have they have full-size buses okay. going here. And uh, whenever you see a bus, you slow down. And, and uh, there's lots of corners that... Uh, when the bus comes to them, they'll blow their horn and they kind of hope that, that the, the bus coming is listening <laughs> so that they don't hit the corner at the same time because one will have to back up. Looks like somebody got a little squirrely with the lines here on the road. Well, uh, <laughs> well what, what they'll do in there is that they'll tell you when to stop passing. They'll, they'll put arrows, like get on your own side. Okay. Know? But if... Uh, if a passing zone is 50 meters long, they'll make it a passing zone. No. Wow. Oh, yeah. So now so now we're going to see the interior areas from uh, Mr. Stewart's uh, camera. So we'll start very off with what David talked about. Thank you, Anita. Yes, very much. And David, we'll let you. Well, th this one was uh, my, my Z8, my 24 to 120. And I shot this at uh, a 40th of a second. What they're doing is there's a, a, a hill that they slide down. It's two kilometers long. These two guys dressed in white, they're just there to, to try to steer the thing because <laughs> they really can't uh, control it much. And um, <clears throat> these uh, 
two women that they, they paid to uh, go on this nerve wracking ride. And uh, as you see from the this street here, that people still park and drive on it and there's pedestrians on it. So these two guys in white are having to steer and they're going around a corner. And if you zoom in, you'll see that the four faces and part of the sleigh are sharp and everything else is blurry. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, are they having a good time or are they scared? Well, I think the one here the with, the, with the bob on the on her head is, is having a great time, and the other one is ready to have a uh, coronary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got four shots of them going around the corner. <laughs> and that's yeah, what I want to cost her. And this thing really moves, too. Uh, you know, the, the, those guys... Uh, they, they, they've got to hang on and, and they've got a, a rope that, that's tied onto the front of the sleigh so just in case they fall off so they, well, they get dragged. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so is it kind of like a sled or, or is it wood? You know, it, it, it's got wooden fall. runners. Yeah, wooden runners yeah. and uh, kind of like a wicker basket look to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but you, you, you see behind the, the guy on the left how the the road is shiny there, you know, and, and uh, the, the road is slippy. You know, or, or wow. the, these runners, they, they really slide on it. I think the runners wow. are, when they do this, the runners are polishing the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so they're, they're going downhill. So the, uh, going down down so, 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 David, did you did you get in one of those yourself with Anita, or did you, you didn't wear? You were not brave enough. To no, it, it's a, I I didn't want to do the walk the walk back to the top. <laughs> <laughs> but we did we did find out where the bottom was, but the bottom was still only halfway down the hill. Wow! You know, so, but it was but that their run is supposed to be two kilometers long. Wow! Yeah. I, I wonder what what. Waiver that you had to sign to jump in one of those. <laughs> oh, and, and it's in Portuguese and I can't read it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this uh, is David's uh, second shot. Lovely. And this one's handheld. And uh, so I'll tell you what it was a second. It was at 1.3 seconds handheld. But with uh, with my uh, Z8, because uh, you can see the the guy in the, in the left up there moving. You no, know, but uh, that like the <clears throat> the image stabilization on this thing is is amazing because I was embraced against anything when I took this shot. And and if Jeff zooms in, you find it sharp. No. Well, for a handheld shot, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And that's where, the, like, a garden or a botanical garden? Yeah, it's a big botanical garden. Yeah, and this they, is they, interesting with the uh, branches here on the where, where I'm moving my mouse. Yeah, it's. <clears throat> Like this was shot in February, so an awful lot of things were in, in their winter siesta for the plants. You know, even though was, I was running around in shorts and sandals the entire time, <laughs> didn't mean that the plants liked it. You know, because this is this is subtropical. You know. And then, uh, yeah, I, I, that's that's cool. I like it. I like it. And this is uh, this is the third entry coming up. And um, and Jeff, you're going to want to zoom in on the name of the boat. Yeah. Anita Maria. Santa Maria. De zooming a little bit more. Uh, did the Colombo. The Colombo. Colombo. Ah, Colombo. Yeah. 
Yeah. Hey, that remind that remind me of the of the chips in this series, Chocolate, that is in I think it's in uh, Hulu. Yeah. It, it, it's a great series, guys. If you want to, if you are in that kind of historical period drama. Of course, it's yeah. based on the old Chocolate that we watched many years ago, but a tre tremendous production. Sorry for the plug for the program, but I, my wife I, I really like the program. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> They they uh, take you out uh, whale watching or whatever with this, but they wouldn't put the sails out. They, they got a motor on this, and well, if you if they use the sails, they would need quite a large crew. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but motorized, they get away with like it too. <laughs> they, they they don't have any. I mean, it looks like a really good reconstruction of those old galleys. Yeah. Here. Beautiful, David. That's neat. And then uh, David's last shot in here. You're not supposed it to. Think, you're not supposed to put nude photos in the uh, photo <laughs> review. Uh, <laughs> this is not a nude photo. <laughs> and this one's handheld also. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> if I knew the picture number, then I could. I can look up the properties. The picture number is in the lower right. Uh, R0, R020527. Okay. And this is at uh, one fifth of a second. F F20. This is with my Z8 again. Beautiful. But, but, uh, I like to drag the shutter so that uh, I can get the, the fountains like this. We got uh, Scubarazzi in the house, uh, a.k.a. Well, I should say Paul, a.k.a. Scubarazzi, now that we know his, now that we know his first name. We, we can actually say hi, Paul. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, that's but, cool. Yeah. But all throughout the... Uh, Punchal, that they had a lot of art like this in different places on the island. They have art, and is uh, they have one place where they have mushrooms, and the the stem is a piece of pipe, and they got a great big rocks on top that that uh, in the order of a couple of tons. So the yeah. some of their art's pretty serious. they all of their sidewalks. They're they're not concrete like you have here. But uh, mm -hmm. they're all inlaid with stone, and they place the stones in individually. And because of the type of cement that they use, there it doesn't crack. It, it's kind of self-healing, just like what the Romans used to do. Mm -hmm. you know? And it, it is a Portland cement. I do have a picture of the type of cement that they use, but I, I felt it, and it, it it feels coarse like sand, not not mm -hmm. not a fine powder. Okay. And that concrete that the Romans invented took a while to really cover it, correct? Okay. Uh yeah, it it uh, only got to about a third of the strength of ours, but they it it was coarse, but like that like this cement that they use. And uh, because it was coarse, um it didn't all uh react right after like it was in the twenty eight days like ours does. But mm -hmm. um, it would take much longer, and um, it would self-heal the cracks because yeah. there, there was no. enough cementous material that, that didn't uh, react the first time through. Love the leading and, line of the of the top of the fountain. So. Yeah. Love the leading line yeah. that they, they defined by the top of the mount, the top of the fountain. It back. took me a while to, to figure out where I wanted to get these the, these two guys, uh, you know. So, but uh, it was uh, this is another lo lovely park, and you know, none of those plants would ever grow here. No, <laughs> maybe inside, but yeah. And uh, th thank you, Jeff and Leslie. Well, thanks for sharing, Dave. It's looks like you guys had a lot of fun oh yeah and uh 
and I only posted 120 pictures out of this, and and Anita is about 150 or 170. So, wow. on her site, great so. travel photography, great oh. travel photography. Yeah, um, it was a fun trip. Uh, Joey, we're going to show your pictures next, buddy. Oh, no, I can't even remember what I sent in, Jeff. I are you ready? You gave me hard time about sending them in the right time. I think these are the ones that had the lens cap on, though. Nice. <laughs> nice. It'll be my finest work. It'll all be in focus. <laughs> you know, I think they're a little underexposed, but, you know, I think you did all right. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, these are the ones from the uh, barbershop shoot. Right, yes, right, right. barbershop yeah. shoot. And if anybody has not watch Joey's video with the barber shop barber shop shoot say that 10 times fast barbershop, uh, shoot, barbershop shoot, wonderful barbershop. wonderful work on that Joe really loved it really loved it thanks appreciate it uh yeah this is June he is the business owner at that barber shop um yeah so we shot this one I want to say this was punched in actually no, this is my 50 so this is the 51 8 kit lens from Panasonic. I shot it wide open uh, we had a light off just to the side um no flash it was just a uh a video light um and i think i shot this one right around one over 500 i want to say and iso probably around that thousand mark um yeah no it's just really fun shoot and yeah you know he was really focused but really nice guy he's uh really really bubbly personality and uh yeah i just wanted to try to capture that in an image and blur out the background as one must yeah i like i like it too with the hand being blurry too i mean that that looks better than if it was sharp you know what i mean totally i think you know showing the movement of the you know using a razor on the guy you know Clippers. yeah it makes it a bit more like everything's in movement except his head so you can kind of like get his focus almost yeah you know. We will uh, go to your second shot. Da, 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 da. All right, yeah, oh, same thing. Uh, this one, this one was with the. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, uh, Gustavo. No, no, always good to showing somebody doing their craft, right? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, this one. Um, yeah, this uh, twenty-four to seventy. It was punched in at seventy. Um, got a little bit of the studio light on the side, which. Probably was a bit of a no-no, but, uh, you know, it was what it was. Um, I really like how the light's kind of bouncing off his glasses. And same thing, he just looks super, super in uh, in focus at this time. And uh, this was shot at 2.8. Yeah, the detail in the eye, in the eye, the eyelashes, the eyebrows, the mustache. Really, really good. Really nice, nice and sharp. Like I saw you can see the you can see the sweat on on his nose too, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, it was hot in there. I kept you know, I kept jacking up the fog machine, and he was like, "I don't think it's smoky enough." And I was like, "We need more." <laughs> and then we'll move on to your next one. Awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, this one. So I got the uh, uh, the reason I like doing this one was because you know the distillery obviously obviously it provided some product for us to shoot with but we also had that dapper street logo there so i thought this one kind of captured both brands kind of nicely and then actually that box on the right side my mother loves old cans for whatever reason it's just like one of the things she loves so i remember i got her that tin when i was probably like i don't know 15 years old or something and she's kept it ever since and i was thinking man that'd be a really cool place to put some cigars so i borrowed that from her and uh, put some really really cheap <laughs> cigars i picked up from the store that day wait a minute wait a minute that's a con you said did you just say really cheap good cigars <laughs> yeah yeah because i can't tell the difference i don't smoke enough so i always get these like really but it was funny i, I remember when i was younger uh, a friend of mine invited me to his house and his old his old man had this uh secret room like this bookshelf would like open and there was this like walking humidor man cave in the back and it was so swanky and we're smoking these cigars, and he says, "Do you know what vintage a cigar that is?" I said, "Is it a Honduran?" He said, "No, it, it, it's it's a Cuban. That that's like a five thousand dollars cigar." I was like, "Really? My Hondurans taste the same." I gave him a puff of mine, and he was like, "Oh, that's that's like the same cigar." I was like, "Yeah, you don't smoke, like, you know." <laughs> it's like the guy who pretends to know stuff about wine, and then you give him box wine, and he thinks it's the same thing. 
Yeah, somebody told me, hey, you're smoking a $5,000 cigar. I think I'd put it out real fast and say, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd try, try to resell it and get a new camera, get a Z8. Yeah, yeah. Say, hey, what do you guys give me for a three-quarter length Cuban? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice uh, nice color me. there, the contrast on the red and the yellow. Joke. Thanks, yeah. Gustavo. Yeah, it was very colorful in that room, and I didn't really pull any, any of the um, color out of the image. I just uh, jacked up the saturation a little bit just to give it a bit more and uh, warmed it up a little bit. But that was that was really about it. It was yeah, just a really cool room. And then we've got the actual uh, smoking of the cigar. Yeah. So this guy, um, yeah, buddy of mine and him jam and this guy jammed a couple of times. His name is Andre, really nice guy. And I said, Hey, uh, do you want me to take some photos of you smoking a cigar? And he was like, uh, sure. So he just came out for the shoot and kind of played some background guitar while we were uh, going with the um, amp we did uh, borrowed from the local amp builder. And, uh, yeah, I just like this one cause it was just kind of like a moment in time. He was just, um, and taking a break at this point and i was just like yeah this is a good time to take a photo and this one was with the 24 to 70 yeah this is a 24 to 70 it's probably around like 28 30 mil somewhere in there um and they get shot as a wide open at 28. Uh, and joey love the fact that you took that, that lower angle not at the same eye level but a little bit lower because it shows the people that they're being important and grand yeah, no, I thought it was like kind of a fun angle. Yeah, to your point, because that kind of like elevates him, and it's like exactly. kind of like mall boss kind of yeah, <laughs> something something along those lines. Yeah. No, I, I mean those are things that sometimes people like you do it intuitively, but uh, are important in the portraying the you know passing the message you want to put about the people that you photograph. Yeah, when he's wearing a hat, you want to come in from below, exactly. otherwise you lose his forehead. This this is where you're waiting for him to say, "You talking to me?" <laughs> no, no, seriously, you must be talking to me. <laughs> and then uh, Joey Joey threw one more in here for good luck. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one, uh, yeah. So we've got a. 1945 Bio Cannon Scotch crate that when I was 18 years old, I decided to shove a 12 inch Jensen speaker in. So we got that one all done up with a grill in the front. Uh, and by we, I mean my father did it because I don't have a handyman bone in my body. Um, and then the top, we've got a 1965 Precision Electronics tube head, all original tubes. And then, uh, yeah, just the whiskey cigar in the same uh, cigar box as well. And um, I just like this one because. You know, it's a it's a really small amp in terms of how low it is to the ground. I really wanted to try to not make it look bigger than it is, but make it the subject, make it not something people would just put in the corner. And I also like how the um, uh, checkerboard floor just kind of you know, brought it in. I, I think if I could have had a do over, I would have centered it a bit more um, on in between the squares to kind of like have that diagonal side to side bringing your eye in. But uh, yeah, it was a it was a fun photo to take for sure. I definitely jammed out after I took that one. Well, thanks for sending these in, and you did it the same night as the last photo review, so you were uh, number one on the uh, on the hit parade tonight. So I guess I better get ready to do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. While, while you're awake, while you're still awake, send us the images <laughs> for next month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Joe, for sending those in. We appreciate it. Yeah, hey, my Thank pleasure. You. Thanks for having me. I'll stick around for a while, though. I'm going to see some more photos. Okay, so um, the next images we're going to see are from uh, from Terry. Um, so this is at, uh, let me get it up here on the screen here. And this is from uh, Egret, Kakadu, Kakadu, yeah, Kakadu National Park. Egret, Kakadu National Park, the 850. Yay, DA fifty! Yay, <laughs> you got the you got the gator in the foreground. Um, oh, DA fifty with a two two to five hundred millimeter zoom, F nine one one thousandth of a second ISO one hundred. Probably a crocodile. Yeah, you that this is probably Australia. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Not an alligator. I'm used to alligators. 
Hey, crocodile. Longer snout. Long skinny no. snout instead of a wide snout. <laughs> I didn't notice it before, but thank you for pointing out. Beautiful. Love that. Two species in one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two is two is better than one, right? Exactly. So now now he totally switched genres on his next shot. Um to kind of throw me off base. And he decided to take the Milky a Milky Way shot. This was with the uh, this is with the with the Z9 with the Z14 to 24 millimeter, and this is a stacked image of 26 frames. Wow! So being uh, on this one, they, yeah, because times, these times eight, eight seconds times eight seconds okay. at f 2.8. ISO 1600. Wow, God, look at what a beautiful image. Gorgeous. Really, really cool, Terry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, David, do you think they use one of those equatorial mounts uh, moving with the Earth on this one? What is your opinion? Yeah. Oh, Terry must be here. I don't know. Yeah, yeah Terry, I, Terry's in here, I think. <clears throat> okay, Terry, that is all. If that that is right on the on the the, the limit of what you can do without uh, without a star tracker. For sure, I think yeah. Paul mentioned that good processing. Zooming again, I mean it's an amazing color of detail. Manual, manual. Yeah. Can I say manual? Wow. Wow! Look at the colors. Gee. You see. <laughs> It looks like on my screen there's a, just a touch of movement in the in the stars. Southern Hemisphere uh, sky. And he well he took this at um, let's see here. Yeah, these were eight seconds. Eight second shots. Wow. Twenty six frames stacked. Eight seconds. Jeez. So if it, if it looks like something's a little soft, it could be, you know, too, on how well it's stacked all the images, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, it, it's it's not just that. It, uh, it's a combination of the of the focal length and your and your sensor because the high megapixel sensors will accept less movement before the, the blur. You know, so if you, if you go back and you shoot at 24 megapixels, you can get away with an awful lot more than you can with 46. 47. So, uh, David, the other thing, I mean, you can see this. It's the, a good the, shot. The, the, the sky is really dark where he took this, correct? Right? Dark sky is important. To that. So oh, yeah. No, none of the yeah. colors get washed out by light pollution. So, beautiful, Terry. Well, and, and it's got to be a night when you have low humidity. There's that. You know, because the, 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 the light from the ground will, will reflect off the humidity in the air. And it's, uh, th th there, there's lots of things, but uh, Terry did a, a really good, you know, it's a, uh, I usually don't stack my stuff like this, you know. Well, then, so then he, so then he, uh, then because, you know, we're we're gonna have to call Terry Mr. Stack, I think. That may be a nickname, yeah. Mr. Stack. Yeah, Terry, uh -huh. which Victoria you, did you take this in? Because I know of a bunch of them. Yeah. Don't know. At least that. three. So <laughs> we'll skip to his next shot that he took as the uh is also an Astro type shot, uh the Orion Nebula. Oh, Australia, with, okay. With the uh, Z nine with the 105 millimeter the z 105 millimeter and hopefully i wrote this down right because if you got this kind of patience man he put down 1024 frame stack times 1.6 seconds at f 2.8 iso 6400. you see yeah we need to invite here terry i know that he's always invited to tell us more about these photos right that we want yes. to learn from terry so you need to give us a presentation. We call we call people here when they show 
exceptional skill to do certain stuff. Did you, look at that. Yeah, Barry, we need we need you to put together a, a, a presentation on um, your stacked image. You doing stacked images? What you uh, what your process is? What you use for software? That type of thing. Terry secretly colors. works for NASA, like a hundred percent. These <laughs> images are so clean, like they look like they were taken by like the I Hubble. Thought, I thought I, yeah, I thought I saw this at the NASA NASA website. You sure this is a, a rich, an original? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so wh how many time. how many millimeters uh, did you get? Uh, this was. I think the one hundred five. One hundred five. One hundred five. Beautiful. It's over a thousand images stacked. Over a thousand images stacked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, I'd have to have some serious alcohol in me to even attempt that. <laughs> <laughs> so kudos to you, Terry. I give you a lot of credit. <laughs> and he's doing this manual. So so aligning all this stuff. I, I presume the, the Terry, definitely you need to make a presentation because these are Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna have to rope you in, Terry, to do a to do a pitch yeah. on the show here because you know no, no, one, no one is safe on this show you know anymore exactly. no one is safe. Uh, and of course we don't have the the, the skies so that guy there of australia but wow amazing colors now 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 in the next shot he flips back to a, a more familiar uh genre and he uh Uses D850 again, yay, for D850. Uh, with a 2 to 500 zoom, F9, 1 500th of a second, ISO 100 to capture the Sea Eagle, white oh, Sea uh, Eagle, Kakadu okay. National Park. Uh, let, me, let me take my hat today. Because that even <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Virtual oh, hat. This, this photo is too clean. Like, this is still Terry, right? Yeah, this yeah. is still Terry. Terry, yeah. be good at one thing. Stop being good at everything. Like, you know, no one likes to show off. Yeah, this is just <laughs> like you're giving us a clinic, and you're not even here to like tell us how you did it. You're just like, here's a bunch of National Geographic stuff. Um, have fun. Now that's such a good image, man. Like, the sky's beautiful. The bird is so in focus. I mean, wow, gorgeous. This is a, a sky replacement, but even though. You know, you got to have the right sky to put together like this because there's yeah. too many skies that are lit from the wrong direction. And when people put the sky in, you, you notice it because the lighting doesn't match. But this is really close. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. So, Terry, thanks so much for sending in your, your entries again this month. We all appreciate it. We all enjoy it. And, yeah, uh, and when Terry does his presentation, it'll be early in the morning, so he'll be nice and fresh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Rakesh is in. He says he'll be driving but listening. So hello, Rakesh. Nice to, uh, to hear from you. Uh, the next images are our friend uh, Gustavo's. So Gustavo, we'll do a drum roll. Drum roll, please. <laughs> and we'll put the pre we'll put the pressure on him here. Got he's got to be under pressure. So here's uh, Gustavo's first shot, and uh, we'll let him uh, talk about it. You know, that's a, obviously a very flight. That was an experiment, but the, uh, I think from the technical portion, okay. Right? This is again with a 600 PF times a 1.4 converter, so at 840 millimeter. And uh, with that light combination, you can still do bursting flight at 840 millimeter. Right? So, so I, I, that that's the, the the thing here. I'm not too much of a bursting flight photographer, but uh, I love that that the, how this came and the, you can see the sky to the sea kind of. Or the lake in the case, uh, just above the the frame. So a lot of panic to do, to do this one. Yeah, I think he, I think it like stopped midair for you and posed. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see it, or it's it just gliding. 
y, y you look at the, and you zoom in and the eye, you see? Even this version fly, you can still can focus on the eye. Yeah. Yeah. As and a matter real. of fact, a, a lot yeah. of these photos from the series go ruined because you see this dictated membrane that they sometimes they put on top of it. Yeah, yeah. Or, ha or it's half halfway across sometimes. Exactly. Halfway across. Yeah, so when you well, get the <clears throat> with, with an older camera, you didn't have to worry about that because you couldn't see it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, full full yeah. eye full eye eyeballs are nice when you can get them. <laughs> exactly. So the question the question much. for some people here, and then we can do that another time. Is you what the uh, wing pose you want? Wing down, wing up. I actually showed Jeff another one with the wing up. I sometimes tend to favor the wind up, but but this one has a better placement of the of the horizon. So. Well, the thing is too is is sometimes the like this the exposure is like perfect. You know, the lighting is really nice where I got the mouse right now yes. in here, and then sometimes you know the next shot with the wings up. Uh, sometimes those wings end up being a little blown out. You know what I mean? You never know. So you get like different positions. Uh, depending on how the uh, the bird's wings are, the coloration of the wings, because sometimes the underneath is is different coloration than what you see on the top, exactly. and you, you get you get the perfect perfect shot like you have here, and then when the next one comes with the wings up, then you go, what happened, you know? And and and, and you know, not that you know you tweak it in post and you never know it, but I'm just saying when you're looking at it, no you know. While you're editing it, you go, oh, wow, that's a little bit, maybe that's a little hot, you know, and you got to knock it down a little bit. Uh, yeah. But that's that that's the type of thing you run into, you know, with the positioning of the wings can, it can affect the throw off the exposure of the shot. Yeah, see, right now the, the, the light is coming from the left. Yeah. And if the wings are up much higher, then the head would be in shadow. Yeah. Yeah, so. But nice shot. Yeah. As always. Um, our next, the next one is is next shot. We will put that up on the screen. Uh, Pink tail. That, so, again, the, the 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 discussion point for this type of photo uh, is sometimes do you include the reflection or you don't include the reflection? Right? I I tend to be to to my detriment sometimes trying to include the reflection and, but uh you know that's, that's what i want to do sometimes so you can zoom in on this one a little bit you can see the again the the it has beautiful colors in the the face right and these pink tails are tricky because they have this long tail the northern pink tail sometimes you don't pay attention you can crop them. so I've that would be without the, with the one reflection of But yeah, and then and then here's a case too, Gustavo, and you know this too. Is like sometimes you you know, this is a case too where you may you may take a whole series of photographs because sometimes, believe it or not, I mean at least I find myself doing this. Let's say I took ten shots of this bird, okay. During that sequence, sometimes your reflection of the bird may be a little bit nicer from one shot to the next. So sometimes, yeah, the, the main bird looks fine on every shot, but you're looking to see which one has the best reflection. You know, maybe the waves have calmed down a little bit and the, and you see more of the head or, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So it's exactly. even with a shot like this, it, it makes sense to take more than more than one shot because you're you're trying to get as good of a reflection shot as you can and sometimes it's just not going to happen because there's other birds flapping around that are out of the view of this image that are making the waves and it doesn't go away but um it, i'm exactly. just saying it's, it's, a, it's a situation where it doesn't hurt to take some extra ones <laughs> yeah so so the case is, is this location which is in uh, padres island you're photographing from a rock walk so you kind of get lower down and so you get it kind of it's not the perspective that a lot of photographers like for this type of photo which is closer to the 
to the eye level or uh, to the water level, but you cannot do anything about it. That, like in your area, Jeffrey, I mean, it's a broad walk, you're stuck. You have to take it at the level of a walk. -off. So anyway. Yeah, I'm typing here, guys, before I move on. Type See, another on. thing you could do, Gustavo, if you get a really good yeah. reflection, you can make a composite of that in the bird with the bird in a, in a different pose and just to see if anybody's actually looking at your photography <laughs> <laughs> so here's his next shot yeah is this cool or what and you know and 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 gustavo once again you know you minimize your uh, your effort here i mean you go, well you know it was kind of nice with the cactus or whatever he makes he makes it out like you know yeah, you know, I just picked the camera up and I just kind of like swung my arm across my face and I just took a few shots and look what I got, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's such a clean image. A lot, a lot it's of effort image. to get images like this and uh, yeah. and to get the B in the image as well. And you Come get on. lucky. You get lucky. You get lucky. So yes. zooming a little bit on the face because one of the details of this one that I like, although this is a female, which the of the golden fronted woodpecker. It's uh, the, the male slightly nicer, but you can see all the uh, red color around the eyes. So it's a it's a nice species. Yeah, and you it's look how sharp it is. So you see all the all the the ring around the eye, the detail in the ring around the eye, you know. And uh, you know, and as most of us would say, is that that's the most important part of the picture. Yes, you know, if the if the if the if the tail if these feathers were a little blurry down here nobody would care as long as this is sharp it's a, this is where you this is where you look first you know and we know the perch if you get a nice perch like this case cactus yeah help a lot I man it's good thing his his butt isn't sitting on one of these <laughs> 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 I was going to remark and, and how the he's got the, the thorns going through the tail. You'd be, yeah. be like, who are <laughs> they, they, the, the birds? Uh, I don't know how they manage, but they 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 perch on these cactus, uh, no problem. Yeah, I mean, it looks like zoom in here, it looks like right here it might be, you know, exactly. yeah, getting them. Ooh, ooh, I'm just, that hurts. I'm hurts looking at it. Hurts. It's okay, he likes it. Yeah, he likes <laughs> it. Yeah. He's a bad bird. Uh, let's see, and then we got... Uh, hey, you got the bee in the picture, too. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Randall, by the way, I love your mustache. Oh. <laughs> Oh, this is it's been a week since I, I saw that. you, and you have a mustache now. I am so jealous. This is a this is a fantastic shot. This is wonderful. They're all wonderful, but this is like the berries. This is, I love. This is one of the pieces that I really went to photograph there in in, uh, in South Texas. This is a, one of the pieces that it was familiar for me in my childhood. Right, so this. Uh, which in Spanish with an investor called Christopher, because it is uh, onomatopoeic uh, of their uh, uh, song, the, which means Christopher is basically Christ was, and the, and the other one, which sometimes is called Yes, he was. So, so it's a very interesting, very, very, I mean, it's like. When I heard these guys, it's like I was listening to my childhood, right? And uh, and in this location, uh, there are plenty of these. So I love these great studies. And of course, the fact that they they, they have well, they have these perches there with the berries, right? And, and, and again, of course, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I go say yeah, that the one, so the one that is yellow is so pretty. <laughs> The one that the, the, the mouse is open, of course, it looks. <laughs> yeah. It was the one that I selected for the show. <laughs> so go, going a little bit so you can see the detail on the 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 the, the, uh, the Christopher or, or, or Ray Kiska is a 
fly catcher type of thing, but they, although they eat a lot of flies and insects, they also take berries. A little little curve at the top of the beak. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I love the yellow. The yellow is so, that's such a pretty yellow color. That's so nice. With a little like an orangey tinge down at the bottom. See that area there? I mean, and this is a good uh, preamble to the photos that we're going to see from Luis next week, right? Because that portion of Texas, it has some of these animals from the neotropics, right? That's the, the, the northern extent of, of the birds from the Central America and South America. So anyway, so I do like this one. Once Not again, because, one mine, because I, I went to photograph this piece, right? So, so I'm mostly... <laughs> Well, you better you better like what you shot. You traveled all the way to get them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't want to say, "Yeah, I went there," and oh, it really was horrible. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> happens. Sometimes happens. It happens, yeah. But thanks again, my friend, for sending these yeah. in. <clears throat> and now we're gonna move on to let's see who the who the next victim is. Who is the next victim? Ah. Uh, uh, Ava, Ava's the next victim. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, Ava, we got yours coming up here. So, ah, here's Ava's first shot. Uh, Eastern Phoebe at Lake Martin, Louisiana. Beautiful. Um, like on Z8, she used the Z8, and the Nikkor, the Z400 millimeter f4.5 at 4.5. One eight hundredth of a second, ISO five thousand. Beautiful. Yeah, and Sorry, I think it is, some. Go ahead. No, I was asking whether she did some uh, vignetting or the the image was like that to begin with because the light was coming a little bit from behind. It looks very nice, very nice. Yeah, I think it was. I, I was going to comment on that as well. I, I mean, I think it was probably there, and it and it looks good. It looks good because because there's no like uh, a bright col a coloration in the background that leaving leaving it in uh, adds something to the picture. I think. Yeah. Right? Zooming on the bird. Oh, beautiful. Great, great, great photo. Lovely. Yeah, and then this is like I said, this is you know, this is what you could do. This is at ISO five thousand. You know, how many years ago would you never would you never shoot at that, right? Exactly. You know, it's not and, that long ago. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, well done, Ava. And uh, we'll we'll move on to our second shot, and this is um, going to be a great e great egret oh. shot. At Lake, at, uh, Lake Martin, Louisiana, as well. Uh, same lens, ZA 4045 with a 1.4 TC. So you're at 560 millimeters, 1 640th of a second, wide open. I'm sorry, not wide open. 1 640th of a second, F6.3, ISO 1250. Man, Eva, that's a great, great egret. Like, that's such a nice <clears throat> photo. I like how you've kind of got them at the top of the image so the blur in the foreground kind of draws you upwards and the log yeah. as well Joy. you got great egrets you got great egrets and you got great egrets the greatest of all the egrets the greatest of all egrets yes one egret on, on her last shot she made a comment there that she that she added a little bit of vignette to even up what was there uh, naturally. So um, a little bit of both. Some of it was there, some of it she added. And uh, let's see. So photo number three. Ah. This is um, sunset at Martin Dye State Park, Texas. Z8 okay. with the Z24 to 200. Okay, you don't hear too much about the 24 to 200, so I don't think anybody's got nothing to complain about here, right? This is a 24 no. <laughs> to 200 uh, 90, at 92 millimeters, F8, one, one thirteenth of a second at ISO 64. 
I love it. The sky is yeah. ominous. Point of the coma. <laughs> uh, a tornado. It was <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. No, I don't like how the. I mean, uh, yeah, I like how the dark cloud. I like how the dark clouds look at the bottom, you know, of the uh, frame. Yeah, that, almost that, like that, uh, that, almost that. like a paintbrush look down here, you know. Exactly. Right. Somebody took out their paintbrush. And, and with the reflection, you know, putting the the the, the point where it reflects in the middle, it, it what it works, correct? Right? So. Yeah. Excellent, Eva. Excellent. Yeah. Zoom in a little bit just to see the uh, detail. Wow, that's another Oop. good one. But I'll so, back up. Yeah, because those cypress, you know, those cypress tree. They're very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Wow. The only comment that I would make is on I crop it a little bit more on the right hand side because there's something that's right at the edge of the frame. Right here? Yeah, there, there's three of them. Yeah, yeah, just and, like. And, and not like that's that's only minor, but it's easy to fix. Yeah. And you got one thing floating in the water too. But that, that's only minor stuff, Eva. It's, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but uh, because of yours and Gustavo's bird pictures, I'm not gonna submit any more bird pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Here's her last image. This was a uh, this was a sunrise at the same park, Martin Dye State Park, Texas. The eight same 24 to 200 uh, lens at 69 millimeters, f14 one second, ISO 64, and she sent me this from her iPad. Wow. Yeah, I like the fog. Sure. And the mist there. See, landscape photographer has to rise up every two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Ava, thanks a lot once again. You know, another another banner evening for you here with your images. Great job. We appreciate it. Uh. So, Okay, Scuparazzi was asking, I don't know if it's on this image because I'm I don't know when he made the comment. It's wondering if what's in the in the background if it's a train. Or, there's a picture before. Or, because okay. it had, the, had the, the, the line of white lights. Uh she said a, a road in the um, in the background. In the background. Yeah, she said a road, the there? road in the background. That's what she said it was. Okay. And the, exactly those little dots little, on the, the, little, right side, on the yeah, left side. little dots. Yeah. Exactly. Very the good, beautiful. Ava. Good job. Wonderful job. Sure, then we're gonna move on to let's see who is next. Drum roll. Okay, so the next person up on the docket here is our friend Martin Hill from Germany. And uh, as he sent me these, he he said uh I think he, trying to think of what day he sent me these, but is, is he said uh, left Germany yesterday to visit the USA. Uh, he's going to stay four days for the eclipse in Texas before heading east. He'll be in the Myrtle Beach area on April nineteenth, April twentieth time frame, and hopefully him and I will get to meet each other. That's the uh, that's what we're trying to do anyway, and that would be fantastic. I always like meeting meeting people who are travel traversing through the uh, neighborhood as they say uh so that we can enjoy a lunch or a dinner together uh, so hopefully we will get to see each other that would be really neat um so his first image is he's saying this time he's going to present a few of his fluorescent pictures and they're pretty mm -hmm. unique because no one else he says because no one else is stupid enough to run around with a UV torch <laughs> at night way off the beaten path just to shine it on native orchids to take pictures. <laughs> so he uses a cheap UV torch that emits a nice narrow band of UVA light and he tries to light paint the plant during a very long exposure. 
Uh, so he says this first picture shows a uh, yellow lady slipper. Um, okay. I'm not going to try to pronounce the, the the technical name for this. Uh, once again, don't throw big words at me, man. I'm not I'm not good at it. Um, he says this is one of the most popular native orchids here. Under normal light, it has a big, beautiful big yellow flower with red brownish petals. It is endangered in its home state because of excessive poaching. We still have around 2,000 specimens, though, which is not too bad. This is, of course, yeah. taken late at night in eastern Hesse on the 22nd of May, 2020, shot with a D810, the Nikkor 60 millimeter AFS lens, five second exposure, ISO 80, F16. Cool. And those are magical photos. But yeah, zooming a little bit. Yes, I mean, I want to see. I mean, I probably this is where. Wow, look at that. Yeah, these details. <laughs> yeah, that that yeah. reminds me that that he will be uh, looking in your area. Remember that he mentioned one of the males or in one of the that he's looking photograph the Venus trap that are endemic there of the Carolinas, right? So, so hopefully he will, but it, it, this is magical, the light, uh, fantastic. And the fact that it goes from, you know, the dominated portion to the dark, to the dark post, portion, uh, and, and the fact that he painted with the light, I mean, I love it, Martin. Yep. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet, as they say. You <laughs> ain't seen nothing yet. Here's image number two, baby. Oh, wow. Oh. So this is a, he says, this is from the same night. It shows a military orchid. He says, no kidding. It's actually, it's actually called that. Orchis, I'll pronounce this one, Orchis Militaris. That's the technical name for it, Orchis Militaris. Because the name comes from the helmet-like top and oddly human-shaped flower. Um but the UV light reveals some colors. He says, military orchids are not all that rare throughout Central Europe. Main problem could be habitat loss. He says, I love yeah. how weird this plant looks under UV light. Taking a few miles from the lady slipper that we just saw. Uh, also using the D810, the 60 millimeter AFS lens. 15 second exposure, ISO 80 at F16. Really cool. Really cool. Again, uh, Jeff, see, we need Martin to make a presentation on this because it, there's so much to ask, right? Did he yeah. use a the, did he use a, a, a tripod? The, look at that. Wow. Well, at 15 seconds, I'd like to think he's doing these on a tripod. Uh, yeah, exactly. He's like got the steadiest hands in the world. If he's that steady, he's either suffering from rigor mortis <laughs> or. <laughs> But, but look at the detail of the, I mean, look, yeah. wow. You know, it's funny, yeah. the, uh, the, the the pinkish tones here or whatever, you know, that that doesn't it almost kind of look plastic, plasticky. Yeah, see, that's it's, what it's I that, thought. Yeah, yeah it's kind of kind of weird. It looks because like, that looks texture like, is probably revealed by the, by the, the, the UV light. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's exploring another dimension, like, Remember what Kubarasi was telling us about the filtering of the colors from the water, correct? Right? It's only when you put a flash, you reveal the true colors. And in this case, it's the UV that, that reveals some of the, uh, that, that part of the spectrum here. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, fantastic. Martin, need a presentation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Martin. We're going to be, we're going to be, uh, you between you and Terry, we got to get you guys to do a pitch. Exactly. Here's a, here's another one. Uh, this is he says this is called a bird's nest orchid. Uh, this orchid's not rare at all. He says it can be found in almost every dark forest on calcareous soil. It has no visible chlorophyll and no leaves. It has a rather unattractive brown color under visible light, very easy to overlook. Nobody really cares much for these plants, but they're, but they are a treasure to him and they really reveal their true beauty under UV light. Um, you see, Jeff, 
uh, if Martin do that presentation, then we're going to get our other uh, flora expert, Jeff and Leslie, nature photography, going out at night with the with the UV light in in the well, in the Ohio area. Yeah, I don't know if it was a Netflix special. Net, Netflix is really good for a lot of nature photography documentaries now. They they really have some good stuff that they put on. And of course, you know, you got National Geographic channel, you get all their stuff as well. And uh, I forget which channel I was watching, but they had a whole episode basically on how um, it, it wasn't so much focusing on on plants. It was it was it, it did show plants under UV light, but it was also focusing on changes of colors of animal of different creatures that night, how they look different under UV light, especially uh, well, reptiles and uh, you know reptiles, toads, things like that. You know, insects, um, insects, as well as well as flowers. So they they had a whole they they did a. They actually outfitted a movie, a movie camera, with uh, that that shot and captured the UV spectrum, which was really really neat. Had some really decent uh, images on that show. Can you oh, uh, Jeff, I, I got I got a drop. Sorry, guys. Okay, Joe, you have a good one. Thanks. Have a great night, guys. Awesome yeah. photos as always. Lots of what what a variety. I've never seen space and then macro flowers with uv on it like, wow <laughs> so cool it's very cool but you see, see this is what this community this is what this community does right yeah 100 100 it's crazy isn't it what 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 everybody collectively does on this on this uh on this show it's great pretty amazing 100 now, right, now, guys uh, have a great have a great rest of your show see you later yeah thanks yeah, for yeah. thanks for your images uh once again joe my pleasure. We'll see you all next week. Okay. Uh, so he uh, he comments further here. Um, he says, uh, surprisingly, the flowers flowers lip shines bright white, and uh, which you can see in the image here. He says so under visible. He says under visible light, right right here. And he says ah. under visible light. Uh, there is nothing to see from this. He says this is close to his hometown, and uh, he took it a few years ago. D810, 60 millimeter AFS, once again, ISO 64, F16, eight second exposure. So, are those leaves, are they fluorescent or? The, oh, yeah, the fluorescent the open the up, it looks like a, a leaf with. Uh, white specks on it yeah this yeah is, this right is right in here yeah, yeah. here yeah. And, and up here is fluorescent yeah. okay so the, the, the blue we're pointing to is a flower but i'm trying right. to figure out what that is is that a leaf the or? pollen no the that's pollen. The po that's like oh, a pollen oh. or, yeah. okay got it um now his last image that he sent in when which is another fluorescent image let Amazing. me get to it give me a second I look at that. Like a ballerina. <laughs> Looks like an octopus, isn't it? Like an octopus. Yeah. There's not an octopus. Yeah. Uh, so this is called a ghost orchid. And he says, and it has a fancy name, which I'm not going to try to read. He says, not to be confused with the American ghost orchid. So apparently there's a difference between the two of them. He says, the one thing they have in common is they are incredibly rare. He says, in his home state. They have only one known place where they grow with very few specimens, less than 10 plants. These are very odd plants which do not have chlorophyll either. He sat on the path next to the plant for hours waiting for darkness, not to accidentally harm the flowers by stepping on them or even get too close and compact the soil. While they really do not look very attractive in normal light, he says, and are tiny, not bigger than five inches, on that particular spot and brownish white because they think they're very pretty under uv light he yeah, took this on july 5th of 2020 somewhere in hesse late at night with the d810 once again 60 millimeter iso 125 f16 uh, 15 second exposure 
So he comments. Wow. Uh, he comments. I hope this is not too nerdy. I can be pretty nerdy when it comes to native <laughs> orchids. Uh, most people are probably bored by this, but I hope this is still somewhat interesting. He says, I may try to take more animal slash insect photos too under UV light in the future, which more people may care about. Uh, no, you, you, well, yeah, you could definitely take some of animals and insects as well, but you did not bore us I, by any means at all. They're beautiful, very beautiful and, and, a, and an imaginative technique to show to show what actually creatures see at night, okay? Some creatures see uh, what plants look like uh, with and they see it in UV, you know what I'm saying? So some creatures mm -hmm. actually see this color. I uh, think where the, human eye, the human eye would not, but some creatures do see these colors. But, so it, it's interesting. Particular, yeah, particularly pollinator. But, but Randall, look, look again, the texture, right? In the yeah. in the flower and the stem, I mean it's yeah. amazing. Take my virtual hat, uh, Mr. Martin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I love the different colors. So you have red, you have purple, you got green, a little yellow, a little white. And then even the uh, and what I like too is this isn't he didn't he didn't make this all completely black. You can kind of kind of see what looks like dark green in here too. You know. It kind of so it gives it a texture because you got um, it isn't just solid black. I don't know if you guys could see it on your screen or not, but if I if I zoom in, like I go on the bottom okay, here, you okay. can see you can well, see a little bit of coloration just, in here, and uh, so that 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 adds that adds something to the picture as well. And, you know, and sometimes you may not know, you know. I wouldn't be surprised that you don't necessarily notice that when you actually take the picture, but I'm sure when you get home and you put it on the computer and you, you get kind of a nice smile on your face when you're, when you're looking at it, you know, <laughs> and, uh, uh, Jeff for sure. He, he's not going to board, uh, get, get any boring with any nerd nerding in here. <laughs> no, we want no. to see, we want to hear a lot about this. But yes. Now well, the next image is coming up. Let me let me just have a swig of soda here. Randall, you're up next, my friend. Oh boy. <laughs> the, the nice thing about this show is everybody is different genres and it's is that and it's a nice mix. Yeah. Okay, so let me bring up your and first it's, it's hard to follow something like this. <laughs> so you have to get a cute furry animal. <laughs> this is right off the river walk. Okay. And I believe this is at uh I would say 90 millimeters. So I'm using the Leica Q3. It's a 60 megapixel camera, but I got it cropped Ooh. in at 90. Okay. And then you got a couple different poses of it here. You got your next image, yeah. it's posed a little bit differently. Or it's, or it's saying, I'm going to run away from you now, Randall. I don't want any more pictures. <laughs> well, no, he was waiting for me to feed him. Oh, uh, he was waiting for you to feed him. Yeah, yeah, that's why he was staying there. So I reached in my pocket, and I was getting some, and he thought I was getting some food, so he was starting to come closer. Ah. <laughs> and then you pulled out a piece of bubble gum for yourself and said, sorry, pal, you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Randall, this is not a gray squirrel being in there. So those are uh, a little bit bigger. Okay. So there's a brown, there's a red squirrel. And we have another squirrel too. But I think it's the brown squirrel right here. Yeah, the fox the okay. fox squirrels uh in South Carolina anyway are, are more gray with a black face. Okay. Black around the face. But you know, there could be different variations, I'm sure, but I got an interesting I didn't put it in my photos, but I, I got a an interesting photo of, of a fox squirrel the other day that I could drag up later on if it gets slow I could I could find it. Um, now now you're gonna have to explain uh, the, the next photo um, <laughs> to me here. Okay. Oh. So I, I sh slow down the shutter speed, and okay. but it didn't work. But the thing is, when you take a picture, 
I noticed a problem with the Panasonic and Lumix cameras, or even with the Leica, it takes a long time to save the image. Now, I would give a pass to the Q3 because it's a 60 megapixel camera and it, it gets some pretty large files, but that's a JPEG. And I made sure it was like an 18 megabyte type file. Was it 18 or did I send you the wrong one? <laughs> but <laughs> a- anyway, this is at the Riverwalk. So you can't see where the water is coming out, but it's right at the top. And then it goes down the stairs. And the so next it's like a little, a little pipe? A little yeah, pipe or yeah. something? Yeah, but you can't see it. It's yeah, you uh, can't underneath, see it. but that's where the okay. water is coming from. Yeah, but it's sharp. You know, I just. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad this isn't a leak in your basement or something. <laughs> yeah, I know. But if it was, you can see all the mold there. So. Yeah. Or the moss. No, and then you, and then you got a, another view. Yeah. Oh, that nice. So this is all at the Riverwalk. They got malls. They got restaurants. They got boat rides. It's a nice place to go. Um, Definitely. So this is how they clean the sidewalk. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. same, you know, same. actually, every March, just before St. Patrick's Day, they uh, dam up the water and they clean it up. And then they put the green uh, color in there to fill up with the water and you get green. But the only problem is uh, they take all the fish out first. So there's animals in the river. And then uh, once they do that, then they dam it up and then clean it and then put in the uh, color. You would think they would do that after St. Patrick's, but no, they do it before. So. Hey, Randall, an idea. Do they still do the, the boat rides in the, in the river walk there? Yeah, yeah. You should take one of those river boats <laughs> and, and, and do a film. I was thinking about that. Yeah. That's, that's a good idea there. Beautiful. Oh, I love that real walk. I like the uh, photo. Too, missed, right? uh, probably already missed uh, Jeff and Leslie left the left us. Um, but uh, if you if you guys are still here and didn't take off, thanks for your entries, and uh, we'll see you next week. As cool pictures. So sorry, I didn't uh, I didn't notice it. Didn't notice you in the chat here until probably too late to say goodbye. But. Uh, Appreciate your, you know, your time coming on and everything and sharing your images. Um, so now, now we're going to, uh, I know, I'm pretty sure John's not, John Ishii still isn't here. I don't think he's still here, uh, yeah, but he I, said, you know, he snuck in a couple images here. And um, the first one is, oh, oh and, man. And, and and uh, and this is he he said this is a cow race in Texas. Wow! So this is in your turf, uh, your <laughs> turf, my friend uh, Randall. Cow race in Texas, and he took this with the D4S. Jeez, uh, okay. No, no other uh, photo information provided. So just said it's the D4S. What what an action show! Show, show, show the assuming the face of the guy. Is that a medium format by any chance? No, no I, I, think think this, I think this is probably a film shot. Okay. Well, no. D4S, that was not a film camera. No. No, no that, that was a digital D4. Yeah. Yeah. So no, so me. Uh, let me, I got to get to my. I gotta get over here and so I can see my magnification because I don't ah, okay. I don't show it on the screen so I so I don't block the images here. Uh, let me fantastic image. Did he have a there. date on that? God. Was it back in the two thousand? No, it won't. I'm at four hundred percent. It won't let me really do it. Ah, okay. 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 I don't know why, but it's not letting me. Uh... Well, I had that problem too with uh, the the um, NX uh, Studio. It's like if it's more than 4K, it just crops the picture. So you don't really see it at the full resolution. Yeah. So. Mm. That's probably, but that's, it's interesting. Because that's why, you know, I saw the uh, square and I says, it, it's got to be medium format. 
No. And he I doesn't want at no. 640. No, he, sent, he, he sent in a very small size file. Ah, okay. that's, that's It's a very small size yeah, file. And that's, that's the problem. We'll you have know. to talk to him about uh, sending in bigger files. Yeah, it's a very small file. I mean, Beautiful. 640 by 467, very small file. Okay. So that's why we can't really do much with it. You see, um, but yeah, yeah, so, you know, yeah, this is what we are discussing here, right? Because you asked for 20, uh, 2048, 2048, exactly. Yeah, but I know, and, and I don't, and I don't have any heartburn if you want to send it in bigger because I got enough no, space no, no. on my computer. I, that that's but, probably good enough. The, the ones that, yeah. the, that I send are still 2048, yeah. right? They are yeah. a lot bigger than that. But I know yeah. this, oh, yeah. this happened to me in one of the shows with uh, with uh, Chuck when we originally started with this. That if you grab, I mean, you convert to twenty forty eight, and if you grab that file and just dump it into the email, it reduces well, it. Again. Ava, Ava's taking off, folks. She's got it. She says she's got to head out. Long day driving tomorrow to Texas. Yeah. Well, yep. Ava, yep. have a there too. Have a safe drive, and I hope. That the weather hope it doesn't rain. Yeah, I hope the weather <laughs> works out for you. I hope your yes. sky is much better than the sky here. Yeah. Exactly. So, so good luck, Eva. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Uh, the last image, the second image, and the last image, John just sent in two. But, uh, wait, 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 Jeff. So wait, because it, that's, that happened to me. That's for John when. It, so John, when he dragged that photo, okay, if he and he probably using a Mac, he still need to check that the image is original size before you press the send to Jeff, because that that I think Jeff even that happened to one of your photos at one time in when Chuck was doing the the live review. They say, wow, that, I have seen this photo for Jeff, and I know it has more resolution. It, it, it looks small like this. So I think for the people that submit the photos, yes, you can reduce it to the sizes that you have one, so 2048 on the long side, but they make sure that the the email program doesn't reduce it again, which is probably what happened to John here. Yeah, if you email it, you could, you could do large, medium, small, or whatever. Make sure you do large. O original size. Yeah. yeah. Original, o original size. Original size. Yeah. yeah. Because he already have reduced it to 2048. Yeah. Sorry, no. Jeff. I wanted no. to. That's fine. Um, and, and and he's not the only one having that problem because I've got some of the people that I'm with in Vancouver have the same problem, and then they wonder why when they photo review that their photo looks like crap. Well, exactly. Now his second image that he sent in, you know, he just sent in two is of the. He's talked about this before uh, on the on the uh, show. Uh, where he was there when the tsunami hit uh, years ago, oh, and this is a this is a shot of the tsunami. This is with the D two H, with a twenty eight to seventy f two point eight lens. So, oh, where's wow. the dead guy? Probably underneath those cars <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> or in the cars, wow. or in the cars. Yeah, who knows. Well, actually, these look like these are like this one looks like it has a sticker on it <laughs> on the windshield <laughs> on the side. Yeah, a new car. Yes, <laughs> new car. Well, it was a new car. Now, now you can get a great deal on a new car. <laughs> low mileage. <laughs> yeah, low mileage. Uh, uh, minor accident, got repaired, no problems. <laughs> uh, and with all these photos, this natural disaster. You know, it's a reminder that nature is in control. Right, so yeah, yeah. nature's in control. So, for those of us that think that we're the ones in control, uh, we are. We are. <laughs> exactly. We are very foolish people to think that we have no control. <laughs> See, this would have been taken when he was a photojournalist. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so, <clears throat> there's got to be a dead guy someplace. Yeah. Well, at least he had to have a guy to show the perspective of a. Of the population there, yeah. right? I, I remember what he said at the time. He had to have a Western Caucasian guy to make it sure that it goes into into the AP uh, and international market, right? 
Yeah, see, it says Massage is Superstar Beauty Saloon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, multi multifaceted businesses. We do, we do, we do many things in this one small spot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. Mosman had an interesting comment here. That's actually not a tsunami, just a driver's ed school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that maybe that notice on the side just says student driver, right? <laughs> 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 no, I that they they uh, read the sign where it said massages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they wanted to stop. They go, oh wow, look at that, look at here. <laughs> so, John, even though you're not here, well, hopefully you'll watch the show later on. Thank you for your submissions, as always. We appreciate it. Two thousand and four. That's what I mean. And okay. Yeah. Now, the, the next images, uh, and hopefully Paul's still here. I think he is, uh, are from our friend Paul, a.k.a. Scubarazzi. And he sent in some images. And uh, before I show the first image, he says, uh, one, one week late, but I think it's still in time for an Easter picture. So we will put up his image here and talk about it. And let me, let me back out. So he oh. says in the... Uh, in the forest close to where he lives, there's a place where some mice live. And from time to time, he leaves a little food there. They're kind of used to people, so he leaves some snacks there. And a few weeks, they, you know, they get used to getting fed by people. So he started to put some decorations there, and they were not shy at all. <clears throat> and they posed for him. But his, he says his evil plan is not to photograph mice, but to feed the food of the animals that I want to shoot. <laughs> In this case, it would be owls, martins, or foxes, but so far, no luck. He says, so I sent you mice. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, so I think the, the morphs are scaring the uh, owls away. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, he used the, the Z8 with the Sigma 180 to 6, um, 1 12th well, 1 of a second, F6.3, ISO 3600 uh, at 600 millimeters. Wow! So the swerves, the okay. swerves are having a good time with the, with the mice. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, so his I next. Mean, that's a great shot. Uh, <laughs> so his geez. next, his next uh, shot. He says, uh, as spring is is arriving slowly in Europe, many animals get active in the forest. He noticed three squirrels running around. He was lucky to get one. Um, on this rock. Ah, oh, um, red squirrel. Well exposed. He says, I hope to get two or two or three of them on one photo, but he wasn't that lucky. But uh, he know he must hear you because his ears are straight up. <laughs> he know, he heard the shutter. He heard your silent shutter go off, maybe. Because <laughs> he <laughs> used his V8 with this with the 180 to six once again, uh, one four hundredth of a second. F6.3, ISO 4500, and he was at 600 millimeters. Wow. Well, the, the Z8 still makes a noise when you take a picture. It's not completely silent. Yeah? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> all of my cameras make a noise because uh, oh. when I use oh. the intervalometer, that they'll... Uh, I don't know what what it is in th that that moves, but something moves in there. In, in uh, okay. <clears throat> it may be that. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that my hearing is not that good. Uh, <laughs> my hearing is not that good. <laughs> well, when you're shooting wildlife, their hearing is very good. You know. Yeah. They, they exactly. Yeah. Mine is not, but theirs are good. It, this is beautiful, uh, Paul. I, I love this. I presume this is a red squirrel. <clears throat> It doesn't look that red these time of the year, but yeah, I've never, I've, I've never seen one of these. I, I like the ears. I like the way the ears are. <laughs> yes. The uh, watch uh, Honor, and uh, she has a lot of squirrels, and she tells the difference between gray, red, a couple other squirrels. Yeah. And the red squirrels in Europe, unfortunately, are getting very rare now. Yeah, if the. 
Yeah. Beautiful. So, zooming a little bit on the face on this one. But love the moss and the. Yeah, that's a yeah, wonderful that. shot. Beautiful. Wow. You know, they, when I, you make me zoom in, sometimes they scare me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a red but, squirrel, but, but, but in but the, the winter they get dark and they have this longer hair on their ears. Okay. Yeah. Got it. But, but, but that's amazing, Jeff. I mean, when you zoom in on some of these photos, I mean, how much probability you have in this type of photography? Yeah. No. Now, his next, the next shot he sent in. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it up first, and then we'll talk about it. Uh, he oh. says, uh, this buzzard was sitting on a bridge, not caring about any of the cars going by. And when a person with a dog walked by, he flew away. Um, he says, this individual is not very shy. We did take pictures of it already before. Sometimes he can get close to it, once even so close that we had to back off because the lens didn't focus anymore. <laughs> I have some portrait shots, but he says he liked this action shot more. And uh, same camera, Z8, 180 to 600, Sigma, 1 12 of a second. F6.3, ISO 1600 at 600 millimeter. Beautiful. So is that the 150 to 600 on the Sigma? Uh, one, 180 to 600. Sigma. Right, so that's one. Sigma. 180 to 600, yeah. And um, let's see here. Give me a second. All right, let me find this next picture. Oh, it's a Nikon, uh, 180. Yeah, it's a Nikon, yeah. Well, it's a Nikon Z8, but he used a 180 to... 180 to... Uh, 600. He wrote Sigma, though, or I typed it wrong. Uh, yeah, he, he said that he typed it wrong. Okay, okay. Uh, so his last shot yeah. is a great blue heron and um, sitting on the border of a small fish pond. He says he figured out that it's like, like shooting fish in a barrel. The pond is less than 5 <laughs> meters or 15 feet in diameter. All the big fish are already gone. He seems to be a smart bird, and unfortunately, he did not catch him in the act of catching a fish. Well, at least he got him when he was flying away. And once again, uh, same combo, Z8, 180 to 6, 1 hundredth of a second, F5.6, ISO 5600 at 230 millimeters. Now, he, he, he presents a challenge to the panelists, and I can't partake in the challenge because I already know what the answer is, obviously, because I have the information in front of me. So he says, can the panelists figure out what these pictures have in common besides the lens and the camera he used. And he's going to give you a hint. Yeah. I'm going to give you a hint. He did not take any of the pictures by himself. They're also not AI generated or stolen from other photographers. So there's your hint. So, uh, so I will, I will go back uh, to the other images because he says, they all have something in common besides the lens and the camera he used. He didn't take them by himself, and they're not AI generated or stolen. So I will just, I will just, you know, go back to these images. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Terry. Auto capture. Yeah, and they have it now on oh, okay. the Z8. Well, yeah. you nailed it. That's the answer. Auto capture. He used auto capture. On all those images, uh, he says. Uh, good. He says for the birds, he had the bird autofocus active, and for the other two, the animal autofocus. He says it worked very well. Yeah. Um, you know, with this, with these good autofocus options, they really give us give everybody new opportunities. And, and, and uh, the other common thing, and it's a theme that, that it, is urban wildlife. See, they are all in the in that some sort of man-made environment, environment. Yeah. including the the the, the mice, including the mice, yeah, the mouse. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm congested, I'm folks, so I apologize. Um, now, there, so that's that's what we got from uh, Paul, and we thank you for sending these in. As yeah, always, beautiful. my friend, very good job. As always, um, the we are getting near the end here, believe it or not, which is good because I'm getting out of I'm running out of gas. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> The, the the next few images were uh, just some images that this particular individual shot while he's walking his dog. That's a hint. He, he shot him when he was out walking his dog. Uh, images were shot on the Nikon ZF, and he had one with the Z9 with 24 to 120 f4, and one with a lens I asked him about that I'm thinking of buying down the road, the Voigtlander 50 millimeter f2. Apo, Apo chromatic lens. It's a, they call it the Apo Lanthar lens, manual focus <coughs> white wander lens. Um, so these were all taken on a walk, and it was from someone that we haven't seen in a while, Mr. Joe Stroud. And we always find his in images interesting. So we're going to start off with the first one, which is a uh, white, white tailed, uh, white tail family, deer family. Wow. This is with the um, ZF with that 50 millimeter Voigt longer uh, wow. ap apple chromatic lens. Um, now, what he had in monochrome or in? Uh, well, he shoots say? a lot of black and white. He shoots a lot oh, of black okay. and white film, so he doesn't say, but I'm assuming he was just shooting black and white film uh, rather than That's converting a, on, the, on the ZF. You so can have nice. high monochrome. You can have high contrast. I mean, and uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, he, I know he shoots a lot of bl uh, black and white film, so he, he might have put a black and white thirty-five millimeter. I mean, no, I'm sorry, you can't do that. Duh. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So he had to he had to convert it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, well, I got, you, you I, got my, I got my film hat on in my head for some reason. You, you got your switch on your ZF. For black and white, right, right, and, and, it, and then in the settings you got three choices, right, and, and it works so well in black and white. Well, let me go to ask because but, I mean, be you honest know that you, be honest with you though, I prefer to just uh, well, take a color image and bring it in and use a black and white profile rather than what's you, you, the, you've, you've got a choice available. because the JPEGs in black and white, your raw is untouched. You know, so I I just bring in the raw and then I convert it with a I convert it to black and white with with a with a black and white profile that I, I, one yeah, of few uh, of them that I have that I that I uh, like uh, to use. And we know that Joe is very good at their processing and capturing the mood. So I'm sure there is a lot more to this image with that mood than just yeah. the default yeah. conversion. I mean, but this is obviously fantastic. very very early morning with a fog. With a fog element in here, softens it up, you know, and it's cool. That's a cool image. You got one way over here. You got one here lagging behind. It's kind of behind the branches here, Be behind the, the one in the middle here. There's one over here. I don't know if you could see it or not. It looks okay. like, the, yeah, there's one right in there. Okay, beautiful. So there's actually. And um, so that was his first image that he was nice enough to send us. And then he took a picture of a light pole. <laughs> so this was in the rain. He says this light, light pole in misty rain. And this is with the Nikon ZF as well with the 24 to 120 F4. Beautiful. So moody. Now, his, his third shot is um, while he was taking a walk late at night, he got this image. <clears throat> this is also with the ZF with the 24 to 120 F4 coming up. Yeah. Yeah, he's had an awful lot of, of mist or fog where he lives. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, these pictures you can look at for a while. Yeah. 
see if we can yes what's what is that something brush lane try to so let's see if i can read the sign well that that's all because it's a it's a jpeg and and it's a low resolution so or wow. else it would be there I love yeah love a lot of, lot of uh is it called atmospheric effects in the, exactly. in the shots and then um, the last image that he sent in he called old glory with the nikon z9 this one he used the z9 with the 24 to 120 uh f4 lens come on joe <laughs> that's beautiful so i don't know if he i don't know if he vignetted the corners or or that's it might be it might have been naturally that way because you got some dark areas in the clouds so it, that could have just been the way it was wow take my hat again you know <laughs> um, joe thank you so much i i know you're oh. you're shooting a concert probably as we speak and not getting any sleep tonight uh, but we appreciate I, I appreciate you contacting me we hadn't heard from you in a long time and uh, we love your work. We always like what you submit. And thank you so much for, you know, taking the time out of your busy schedule to, to zing over a few images for everybody to enjoy. We really appreciate that you did that. And uh, <clears throat> we wish you well. And I told, uh, mentioned earlier in the show uh, that you said hi, that you say hi to Chuck and everybody else on the show. Uh, so we appreciate your time as always. We're glad to hope to hope to see you on the panel someday. Uh, if you have a, a a weekend where you don't have a concert going on, <laughs> but thank, you, thank you very much. Uh, and as we always said, I mean, obviously there is a lot of talent on you guys here, but uh, his uh, photo has such a clear style. Remember that we. We don't need to know, but we see the photo. We know that's from him. Yeah. Now the next good image. Is, good job. Yep. And then the next images that we got, we're getting down to the last two contestants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your 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 prizes uh, for tonight, everyone, is basically just uh, flattery and compliments, and that's about all we can give you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, the, the next ones are from Rakesh. Uh, he sent these in, um, and now here's a challenge to everybody. You're going to see, let me see how many, I believe it's, uh, it looks like it's, uh, he sent in, uh, why do I try to find here yet? Give me a second here. Yeah, he sent in four images. So, uh, so his challenge here is, as you look at the next four images, is one of these images is taken on film. So he wants to see if people can guess which which image out of these four was taken with film. So we're going to start with his um, the first image, which I which I really really like a lot. Um, I Beautiful. like the texture. I like the peeling paint. I like the, I'll zoom in here. I like the pile of cigarette butts. <laughs> I don't they know what are in, I don't know what are in these containers and I don't think I want to know. <laughs> the symmetry but, and the composition of the four. All right. Yeah. Look, look like Italy to me, but uh, he will tell us. Yeah, he'll tell us. But uh, yeah, I, I, I really like this image quite a bit. And uh, we'll go through these four, and then uh, we'll, 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 we'll guess which one we think is the film one, and then he could tell us that we're that we're all wrong. Well, we can't all. Okay. If we all pick a different picture, one of us will be right. <laughs> 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 I don't have to do it that way, right? Uh, so here's his here's his second image that he sent in. Uh, 
this thing is as sharp. This thing is as sharp as you know. Yeah. Super sharp. Well, he sent it in fairly high resolution too, which makes a difference. Yeah. Wow. I like it. What is that? Is a is like a fence or what? What can you that? It might. I don't know if it's from something that's farther in the distance that's casting the shadow on the building. Wow. Uh, I would think, based on the size of it, it's from something on the other side of the road, probably. And then, um, and then he he put in this one here. Okay. Well, that's definitely not a film. Well, it could be. So this is uh, this must be at uh, twilight time, you know, or or just bef before before it gets dark, dark, obviously. Uh, nice uh, Manhattan skylight, beautiful. Yeah, and then. Uh, See, I think I think what he was trying to get in this shot was the Dunkin' Donuts sign. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> right. I think he got. I think he was getting hungry. He got. He can go to Five Guys and get a hamburger, and then he can go to Baskin Robbins and have ice cream. And if that isn't enough, he can go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a, don a donut. And then he can go to the movie theater and see a movie. Look! Look how he has it all lined up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, zoom in on this one, Jeff. So we're gonna we're gonna go I'm gonna go backwards now and then each of each of us on the panel say which one we think is the film shot. So obviously they're gonna this this last one will be shot number four and shot number three, shot two, and shot one. I say shot one. I I I that was my uh thought process as well that shot one was film but we'll see what he says what, what the rest three. Of the you think it's three yeah i go for two <laughs> you go for two so so no one picked four so, no one picked four. <laughs> so i don't know if rakesh is still here or not we may not we may not get our answer <laughs> he well he was driving so he's listening yeah, yeah he probably won't give us an answer but so we got two number two number ones. It's the skyline. Oh yeah, skyline. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh. Number three. Gee. Number three. All right. Okay. I would have never. I mean, geez, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I the reason I thought it was number one, to be honest with you, was because of the. Um, when I, well, it looked kind of out of focus, and I well, figured, when, yeah, you know. when I got when I got <laughs> in and zoomed in, uh, I thought this had a more filmic look to it. Yeah, but that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's agreeing. They all thought it was number one, and actually, it was number three. Wow. Yeah. So we we all none of us win a, win the prize. It was going to be a, a Porsche 911. So hey, I'm sorry, hey, Terry we, and I picked oh, up. Terry got three. it. Yeah, yeah. A Porsche 911 124 scale. <laughs> 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 See, I had to adjust my uh, Porsche 911 story here. <laughs> exactly. Oh, the third is scan. That's what it was. Okay, got it. <laughs> the. Um, so the last the, the the last person in this uh, oops, what did I do? What did I do? I, you, you can't see what I'm looking at here, so I gotta I gotta fix this. Okay. Um, I had to move stuff around here. Uh, 
bear with me. I got to deal with too much stuff on my screen, and I got to move things around. And You know, I can lend you a screen. I got two 27-inch screens that are sitting around doing nothing. I don't have I don't have any room on my desk for another screen. <laughs> the, uh, that's the that's part of the problem. Um, Fuji Provia 100F. That's the film that was used. I don't know what I did to that. Jeff, you can do what I do if I've got the screen above the screen, so they don't take up any more space. And I've got four. Yeah, for some reason, I lost my. Uh, for some reason. Oh, well, for some reason, I lost my uh, my notes. Oh. So I won't be able to give you the uh, shot information because. I did something stupid with my file that had the notes in it. So the last images are mine, so it doesn't matter anyway. So um, I'll just throw my shots up. So this is uh, this is shot number one. This was at this was at a uh, place called Magnolia Plantation in North Charleston, South Carolina, and. It's a kind of a, co a combination of uh, the botanical gardens. Um, it has a uh, nature Audubon area, which uh, didn't have much nature there this day. So I focused on other things. Um, this was taken with the uh, Nikon ZF, um, I believe with the 24 to 120. And I like this shot because this we had to walk over a bridge that we never walked over before so we cuz we could see this little this this little structure through the tree line and I says I want to get over there and see see the grounds over there so we want to walk across this little bridge and and I like this shot because I I'm looking at this and the first thing that's popping in my head I'm I'm like wouldn't that be a great place to have a wedding mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be a great place to have a bride and groom in front of that structure or even in that structure, you know, and then have the, you know, have the flowers and, and everything around it. I mean, it was just, it was just a beautiful area within that, um, within that park. And they have, um, and I've taken pictures of that I've shown um, in the past of owls and, and, and birds nesting and stuff like that. Uh, in this particular location and um, you know it's, it's it's just a very nice place to see uh, at least once if you're in the uh, South Carolina area but it's like from my house it's like two and a half hour drive one way mm. so uh, went there to see the you know went there to see uh, you know birds you know nesting uh, and really only saw one <laughs> and it was uh, couldn't get a sh good shot of it because it had branches in front of its face. So that, that was kind of a total waste. So, like I said, I focused on other things uh, other than birds that day. So, so that's the first image I'm sharing. Then uh, the subsequent, uh, the next uh, four images I got were all taken at Huntington Beach State Park. Um, and um, we'll throw this one up. Yeah. This, this from, this was, I was looking through books like crazy trying to figure out what this is. And I'm pretty sure it's an immature pine warbler. Uh, best that I could tell. Uh, I mean, I looked it up on the Merlin app on my phone and I took a picture of it and it couldn't identify the bird. So Merlin wasn't any help. So then I looked through, through some of my photo books and then i just typed in pine warbler on the internet and i found one that was an immature and it looked like 98 percent like this one so i'm pretty sure it's an immature pine warbler so um, uh, give me a second here oh it could be a phobie like like those that uh, eva was photographing see those little whiskers 
Yeah. Okay. And gonna, again, back home, I look at it again. I'm going to look. I'm going to knock the zoom down a little bit. 400 percent is too much. <laughs> yeah. We'll go, with, we'll go with 200 percent. That's that doesn't shock the system as bad. Okay. Interesting. Uh, those those uh, bears are difficult, Jeff, to recognize. You know, and, and well, what drives me nuts with the birds is I'm not I'm, I'm not very good. <laughs> I'm not very good. I haven't been doing it for 20 years, so I'm not very good at the subtleties of the bird's coloration changing during mating season or in the in the winter time or whatever. Because a lot okay. of some birds they don't change at all. <laughs> some 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 are like a chameleon. It's like depending on oh, is it spring, summer, fall, winter? You know, it, it, something looks different on it and you and you think it's a different bird and it's not a different bird so that kind of stuff drives me absolutely crazy so <laughs> uh, i'll be quite honest about that so uh, that was a challenge. It, yeah it was a cute cute little fella yeah uh, to get and then this one i took for roy um so roy hopefully if you're able to eventually watch this live stream this this shot was this upcoming shot was for you Oof. um and and these at, at the other than the first shot, which was with the ZF, the rest of these are with the, the Z9 with the 800 PF. That's a big uh, guy. Lens. This is a big guy. This was this was one of the um, – this was taken um, – well, let me see. Let me see if I can get the – You told me. us that when they get to be, you, the, the pack removes them, huh? Well, uh, they call them. They become a pair of. Uh, they become either a suitcase or a pair of shoes, oh, or whatever, or, or their head ends up in a gift shop somewhere. Uh, but oh, yeah, God. they don't. Uh, I don't think they're too nice to them. But these were. This was a big one. It's, it's pretty. It's wide, and you know, the they'll get to um, typically. Uh, on an alligator, the the normal uh, length uh, when they're full adulthood is 13 feet, uh, mm -hmm. but they can grow longer. There's there are exceptions to the rules. I've seen some that I thought were at least 16 feet, um, but when they they're they're interesting because they kind of start off in their younger years. They start off pretty long but thin exactly and, and then and then as they mature and they stop growing lengthwise they start getting very very wide <laughs> and that's when they and that's when they scare me is when they're this size then you do you yes, do sir. not want to you don't want to mess with this sucker let me tell you uh i've got pictures of gators this size Basically, on this same embankment that this one is on right now, and I've got pictures of these uh, with their head up and their tail lifted up out of their water, and they're chopping on a uh, cormorant, eating a cormorant. Wow. And you can hear the bones cracking every time it chops down. So uh, you take the pictures, and it's, you're at this, you're, part, of your, part of your brain is, dis, part of you is disgusted. Part of you is amazed, <clears throat> but you keep taking the pictures anyway. Uh, you're there to capture a moment, and whether it's a good moment or a bad moment is it's it's bad for the bad for the bird. But for some people, it's like, oh, that's a that's an interesting shot. I didn't know uh, they they ate birds because most people think they just eat fish or crabs, but they do eat birds. They do eat birds. What? Well, they're oppor opportunistic hunters. And especially if you have a wound, if you have a bird that's wounded, that's it. You, you you know you know if you see a bird hobbling around, hobbling along, where one leg is screwed up somehow, you know, you will not see that bird the next day. You know it'll get taken down before the end of the day, and it won't be around anymore. Uh, now the next shot here is a um, bluebird. Oh, oh that's beautiful! Gorgeous. Love that one, yeah. And um, 
Now they're perching fantastic. We'll zoom yeah. in on, and you get that detail around the eye like that. And uh, I, I just liked the lichen and what he was on, he or she was on, and and the turn of the head. I mean, I have, I have, and here's a, here's again a, a situation where I take a lot of photos, and and when I sit there and I call my photos, I'm not a good, I'm a fair color. I'm not a color of photos. I, I don't get rid of as many as I should. But part of the reason that I probably keep more photos than I should is like. A shot like this of a of a bluebird, I probably have a dozen pictures of this bird in this same location, mm-hmm. but with its head in different positions. Exactly. And and so if not that I have clientele that I sell too many images to once in a while, but if someone liked like bluebirds. I can say, well, I got I got ten different positions of that bird's head. I got it looking up. I got its head going to the left. I got it looking straight at me, or whatever. And you try, I try anyway to capture as many positions of the bird as I can because everybody has different tastes. You know what what I may like as a favorite, somebody else might like something else. Beautiful. So that's just my opinion. And then uh, the last shot. Um, this is the last shot of the show, actually. I have a few other pictures uh, uh, to show you. Tim sent in a few uh, shots of the, of the launch the other day that I'll share. Um, th- this is my last image here. This is, a, this is an American coot, C-O-O-T. This is a coot. And this was in the um, – this is actually in the freshwater pond um, that's within the park. And, unfortunately, when f- – in many cases, when trying to capture any images um, in in this particular area, there are very few openings. There are there's a lot of low growing brush, uh, and and some and some fairly large trees that are right on the embankment um, off the walkway. And sometimes you know you see something really interesting, and you just can't get a picture of it because you're shooting through too much foliage and you know, you could pull that, you could pull that trick every once in a while, but uh, it it isn't something you want to do all the time. So when you, when you're lucky enough to find an open enough area where you can get a shot like this, you take it. (laughs) And this this is uh, tax sharp. I love the puts the texture in the plumage, the black plumage. Yeah. It's almost like uh, velvet. Right. So that that is it for the photos. Um, I like I said, I'll show you. I'll show you a few other things. Um, and I'm gonna first, but first, I'm gonna go back to the. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. And we're gonna just go through all these images, and then I'll show you some other stuff. So we're gonna start at the very beginning. And we're just going to show each shot for about two to three seconds. And everybody can enjoy uh, what everybody contributed this uh, this month. And as always, you know, favorite show of the month for me anyway. So exactly. we're going to go through these. And you get the impression that uh, these shows are getting better. Right? <laughs> that means... Um, um, like yeah. David was right. saying, variety. Well, I, I I like the fact that we, you know, that that and, and even you and I, Gustavo, or are, are the people we 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 sometimes surprise people with a shot that they didn't expect us to take. <laughs> Look at that. That's still a great shot right there. Yeah. It's happy. Mr. Bob. Mr. Bob. Mr. 
Jeff and Leslie. Your nemesis. <laughs> yeah, my nemesis. Affiliated Woodpecker. And we got Anita. Beautiful. The weather was like that the entire time. Then we had David capturing screaming women. <laughs> <laughs> screaming women, old old ships, and nude photos. <laughs> <clears throat> I had another statue I could have sent you, but you probably that'd be more than risque. Yeah. Well, you'd be surprised how many, um, a lot of the statues at Brook Green Gardens down here are, um, are kind of like mythology based. And there's a lot of, you know, and, and, and down South, they, people tend to be pretty, uh, conservative. Mm -hmm. Yeah would be the perfect word to describe it and mm. let's just put it this way the uh the statuettes and the sculptures uh are not very conservative <laughs> but 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 they get a lot of people that go there and they have a lot of wealthy donors that support the uh that particular place uh, they have a lot of, you know, they do a lot of wine tasting parties and things like that. And they do, sometimes they have wedding uh, receptions there on certain grounds. Gustavo, these are wonderful shots. Um, yeah. In, and, in Feng, yeah. In Feng Chau, they had a, a bronze statue of one of their great football players, who we call it a soccer player that was from Madeira. And uh, he had his hands that they were they were out like like his, uh, like he was cheering, and on the statue there were three places but where people were rubbing a lot. There was both hands and a place in the middle about the same elevation from the ground. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I don't know if it's from people standing in front of them or just people rubbing them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Squirrel. 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 That's not my dog. My, I'm glad my dog's asleep under my desk uh, right exactly. now. Squirrel. Squirrel. I need a plumber. Yeah, when I saw that, when I saw that last shot, I'm like, "Where's the water coming from? This is freaky." <laughs> That's a great shot by John. Yeah, indeed. Do you think he cropped in the picture, or it's in that format, like this? No, one? no, he 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 sent it too small. This one's the same thing, six forty by four twenty four. Yeah. Too small. He he probably had a mother of a long lens on because you wouldn't want to be close to those two coming at you like that yeah yeah nice smart uh, i still like that picture yeah and that one smurfs see there, there's a, a bush between us and the bird here yeah yeah and still in focus auto capture Love this one. I really like this one a lot too. Yeah. And we didn't we we even got a competition today from our cash. Yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> This is an unusual take on the Empire State Building. 
Yo, Mystery Bird. Big Guy. Big, the big, big Guy. I still like that this one. one. Yeah. So that that is it. And what I'm going to do is at this point, let me. So we get a bonus. Gonna, yeah, we're going to get we're going to get a bonus shot here um, or two. I'm going well, to... there's your five by seven mirrorless camera. <laughs> oh yeah, for. Let me, okay, first let me undo the sharing of the screen here. And thank you so much, everybody, for your contributions, because uh, everybody that's everybody that's here and participating is what makes um, the channel special, I think, to all of us, and the photo review uh very special for all of us. And uh, <laughs> Gustavo is Gustavo embarrassing me by blowing kisses at me. <laughs> <laughs> Do all for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't look that good, Gustavo. We may we may uh -huh. look similar, but we're similar, uh -huh. but, but different. Similar, but different. <laughs> well, if... If my father can at, at 91 can have a, a girlfriend, or I guess you should call her a lady friend. No. Know. Yeah. Yeah. But the two get along really well together. Well, the, no, no, lo, love to everybody here, guys. You, amazing. So, yeah. Like you were saying, we, David, they were right. Oh, the, uh, the, the photography here is just excellent. I got to uh, up my game for next time. <laughs> exactly. uh, I'm going to show a few images that uh, that our friend uh, uh, Tim, aka Mozman, sent uh, sent me. Um, out of you know, just as I'm just sending you these so you can see them, and I go, yeah, you know, well, they're they're interesting. If we have the time, we'll we'll throw them up. And this is of the uh, the launch uh, the other day. And uh, let me, uh, he sent me three, three images here. Ooh. And uh, so he says the two, the two specs near, near my hand here, if you see it, there's a couple of little specs. Those are satellites. Oh, okay. um, but that's, that's a picture of the launch and then um, I'll show you the other two and then there was this one. Oh wow that thing looks just like uh like a like a like like a knitting needle close up or a bullet <laughs> <laughs> He sent one more here. I see Jim and him are taking a lot of these photos. I see these are uh, uh, SpaceX type of uh, rockets, yes, right? yes, correct. Oh, I love that one. That's a beautiful shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. This was this was uh, obviously uh, the yeah the, uh, the 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 stream that was left behind. Exactly. Kind of, kind of neat. And then I got, after after the, the wind blow it up a little bit. Beautiful. The, Mossman, this is the I love this one. Yeah, well, that, that's an M that he's got sideways. You know, trying to get his initials in the pictures. Trying to yeah, make it look like an M. M. Maybe he signed <laughs> it. You know how uh, what was it Nash? Who was it that did the night? Oh yeah, Nikon did the uh, funny animal, funny nature contest, photo contest or something the other day, uh, not too long ago. I mean, uh, they one of their expos that they're at recently, and they had this contest with share your funny, funny uh, 
wildlife photos. Uh, so I've got one here if I can find it. It's not necessarily, I find it, I guess I find it more cute than funny. Uh, some of you may find it funny. Um, so let me find the one here I want to show because I got a few. Okay, this one here. So this is what we call a fox squirrel um, down south. And normally these are not in South Carolina. They're in North Carolina. But at the uh, Brook Green Gardens, for whatever reason, this fox uh, shows up or lives in Brook Green Gardens. And um, on this particular day, I was looking for the baby owl. Uh, the nest had fallen out of the tree. Uh, some people said, well, it was still hanging by the tree. It was still hopping around. I thought maybe I'd see it. Well, obviously, of course, as luck would have it, the owl was nowhere to be found. Um, so I, I heard a pileated, I knew it was a pileated woodpecker. And I went a little, little off the walkway looking for the pileated woodpecker. And I ran into this fox squirrel. And I watched it for a while. And then it struck a pose that I just had to get, and I got fairly close to it with the 800. And I just, I found it cute. I'll just call it cute. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> and so I, I, think, I think this would be a, kind of a funny uh, shot in a sense, like, you know, call it a tree hugger shot or, or this was still... Crazy. Yeah, this was early in the morning. I mean, too, too early to kind of like a shot where you can say, I don't want to get up. I'm not going to go do anything. <laughs> I'm just going to sleep all day. But uh, it's a very cute squirrel, very cute squirrel. I really uh, like these. And, and it's the only place that I could see them. I mean, they are in North Carolina a lot more. But uh, I have no clue why they're only in, only supposedly in this one little sliver down south in South Carolina anyway, but uh, thought in, I would in, just in, that. in the yeah. in the East Coast, uh, yeah. For what I know, I think the the the, the fox squirrels are not as widely distributed as the gray squirrel. Now these are supposed to be this is gray in color, but it's indeed the markings of a of a fox squirrel. Now the fox yeah. squirrel can be reddish. I think the like the one that Randall was 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 showing a believe it's a, a red squirrel yeah. but but then in some areas and I, I when i used to live in louisiana i remember you go to a particular area and then you will find all these co colors that are different from the regular red ones right? with all these patches and those are beautiful they, you, they, this is an interesting subject there uh, jeff if you can find these square with those markings in that area the you know it, like i said it, it, the whole it's 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 interesting and some and frustrating from an identification purpose like i said before with the birds you know that 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 have different markings or their or different colorations during different parts of the year or mating season or whatever and uh but i mean like like a, like a great egret obviously has different coloration and during mating season and, and whatnot, but you still know it's a great egret, but some of the mm -hmm. smaller birds, you have, a, you have a hard time telling what they are because uh, <laughs> the coloration changes is, is drastic enough where you're scratching your head, you go home, you're looking through the books, you're looking on the internet, you're trying to figure out what the heck this bird is, you know, it drives you, drives you crazy. Oh, sure. But it's beautiful. I love it. Definitely good, good subject there to work. Uh, but um, but everybody, you know, like it's like we like we're all saying here is uh, we we really appreciate the the effort that everybody puts in and and taking the time to send in the images. And uh, I have not updated my reminder for the next photo review. Um, but however, I'll just mention that. You could start sending me images starting tomorrow for next month's review. <laughs> so you don't have to wait until the uh, 11th hour uh, to send in the pictures. Um, well, where you are, you can say you can send them in today. 
because it's already tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Right, it's already tomorrow right now. So, um, the a few other things that I there wasn't really a lot out there right now. Um, there, if you go on Nikon Rumors, um, they have a whole list of links to video clips and articles about references on how to capture the upcoming solar eclipse and what gear you need. Uh, obviously, if you're just reading that now in terms of what gear you need, it's probably too late <laughs> to get it unless you have a camera shop like really close to where you live. Uh, and they're, they're sold out. Yeah. But the, uh, they, they also uh, mentioned that the PC Nikkor 19 millimeter F4 ED lens, which mm -hmm. is a tilt shift lens is now discontinued. And mm -hmm. there's rumor, there's rumors that they're going to announce two mirrorless tilt shift lenses either an 18 or 20 millimeter tilt shift and an 85 millimeter tilt shift. So time will tell. And, you know, I guess we are into that. Well, we're into that phase where, you know, um, get out the 35 1.2 already because that's the last thing that was on the roadmap and get it out there. And they, they had supposedly a, uh, leaked photo of the 35 1.2 uh, lens, and I'll tell you that thing looks gigantic. That thing looks wow. like a that thing looks like a garbage can on the end of your camera <laughs> body. It is. You think the 85, you know, 1.2 is big. The 35 1.2 is, you know, bigger diameter. It, it, it's it looks gigantic. Uh, who knows what that sucker is going to weigh, but uh, they do have an image of it on Nikon Rumors that you can <clears throat> that you can see. Um, and then you know, seventy-seven millimeters, okay? for an element, seventy-seven millimeters. Uh, the filter size? Yeah, I mean exactly. I mean it cannot be ninety-five, like a, like a, you know the the the, the six hundred pf. I, I agree with you. It looks looks big. It does look to big. Look. It looks scary. It looks scary big. It could be the way they took the picture, but it looks so <laughs> big. That's a good <laughs> angle. And you throw you throw it. You somebody tries to steal that from you, you just throw it at them. You'll 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 kill them right on the spot, man. They'll be down. <laughs> well, it, it's the same as they try to steal my camera bag. You know, like how far are you going to get? You know. The, uh, I guess I can run after you an awful lot faster, not carrying anything than you can with it. I don't uh, care how good a shape you're in. We got a certain we start we got a certain individual sneaking in here in the corner of the screen, and oh. they, he's in his uh, he's in his Barbie room. <laughs> <laughs> he has his glasses <laughs> on too. <laughs> I can't see a damn thing. I got these eclipse glasses on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, hello, hello. How you doing? Good. How you guys doing? Some great photos tonight. I was oh watching. yeah, yeah. It's 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 fun, isn't it? It's like it's just it's like getting to go to a movie, a good movie. You know, it's like you get Absolutely. everybody. Everybody gets yeah. something. I think everybody gets something out of it. You know, it's better than a movie. It's cheaper. Yeah. No popcorn. Yeah. But they have good whiskey here. <laughs> good whiskey there. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's also a lot of, uh, I don't know if I want to use, I don't want to use, I don't want to overblow the, uh, overblow, blow it here. I would use the word controversy because, you know, I don't, I don't create controversy too often, but you know, there's a little bit of a poking at Nikon here because Tamron came out with that 28, the 75 F 2.8 G2 version lens and the Tamron uh, version that got made into the Nikon badging was with the old design, the G1 design. And so the G2 is obviously going to be a better uh, a lens, uh, more than likely a better lens optically than the G1 Nikon version. So, you know, everybody's kind of 
jump you know, everybody's you know getting all riled up saying well why didn't why did nikon accept the g1 version or or why did tamron normally normally when when a company a third party uh does a lens uh that's going to have the you know say a, the nikon name on it they don't come out with a with another lens of their own that is the same you know they they make it different so it's not competing directly with a nikon lens and so some people are upset that okay here you came out with what is a, a direct competitor to the nikon badged lens uh even though you made it made most of it for them and so people are all in an uproar about that but you know it is what it is if you bought the nikon one you bought it if you didn't buy it and and you're looking to buy that lens now you can read the reviews and you can decide whether the new uh g2 version of that lens is better for you and it more than likely would be but uh, uh you know if, th if things are what they are you know um uh, the uh, Viltrox came out with an autofocus 56 millimeter f1.7 lens in the APS-C arena for the Z mount, and it's only 139 bucks. Now, um, let's just say a, a Viltrox, the quality of a Viltrox lens is not going to be a quality of a Nikon lens or the quality of a Voigtlander lens. Uh, Voigtlander makes exceptionally high quality lenses, but uh, as far as I know, all the ones that they offer for the Nikon are all uh, manual focus lenses or not autofocus lenses. Uh, but if you don't mind doing, you know, if you're not, to me, if you're doing pictures of um, portraits of people or uh, street scenes, or static objects, or uh, flowers, stuff like that. Yeah, it doesn't matter, you know, that you're using a manual focus lens. You know, unless you're taking pictures of things that move, uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, <clears throat> the um, and the only other thing I saw from Nikon rumors that was. Oh, kind of weird because I didn't even know this had happened, but I guess that Nikon is con the rumor of Nikon wanting to bring the red Hydrogen One smartphone to the market. And this was a phone that at one time they were developing and in partnership with Leica. And I guess after a two year period of time, uh, that effort just fell apart. And so po possibly Nikon is looking to resurrect this this camera, the smartphone. Uh, oh, which is, the specs were going to be 50 megapixel camera sensor capable of full 8K video and ProRes RAW 16-bit with pixel stacking for stills up to 100 megapixels. This is on a phone. Uh, sending real-time video and pictures over live upgraded 6G cellular networks or via satellite in real time. Internal storage of 2 terabytes and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Enable journalists. That's an April Fool's joke, right? Has to no. Be sure. No. Oh, it sounds like it to me. Yeah, but, yeah, me uh, too. <laughs> but anyway. Or a very, very, very bad idea. So, <laughs> unconfirmed, unconfirmed project name, Recon. <laughs> Red and Nikon, Recon. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I, I would like to see a SIM card in a, in a high-end camera. They had yeah. some pictures. They had some pictures of what the camera, the initial design of the camera was going to look like years ago when they were working with Leica on their on their website. But, um, I just want to know when they're going to start putting phones in cameras. I mean, the phones stole our cameras, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's what I mean, uh, Tim. If well, you put Mookie that said that Nikon red phone was another April Fool's joke. Well, if it if it is, it it uh, I don't appreciate those kind of jokes. I didn't I didn't appreciate <laughs> the uh, I didn't appreciate one person's joke about. Uh, the Nikon Z63 coming out with a whole bunch of fake uh, malarkey, and I didn't uh, particularly care for 
the uh, Apple buying uh, Canon uh, yeah. uh, joke as well. Uh, I, I don't care for that, you know, I mean, because I have limited time. Okay, I don't have all the time in the world to read all this stuff. I don't have all the time in the world to, to read the six-point font at the end or watch it to the last 30-minute mark of the video where they say, oh, this was all a joke. It's April Fool's, you know. I don't appreciate it. I want to hear real news. I want to hear stuff that's based on, you know, yeah, you got Nikon rumors, which is rumors, but, you know, I don't want just some made believe make up believe crap on uh, on YouTube. Uh, I don't have the time for that crap. I really don't. I don't. I don't like it at all. I think it's, like it's stupid. Well, a lot of the stuff that that Simon says that that he gets it from other people is made up anyway. So this way, he just made it up himself. So it's all first hand rather than second hand. Well, it's. But anyway, you know, it's yeah. just. You know, it's just, uh, I, but you know, I, 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 just, I just, I just think as, as, uh, as I made a comment, excuse me, a comment on Gray's, um, live stream Friday morning. Um, I didn't, st couldn't stay on very long, but I, I just made a comment and, and basically, uh, con confirmed, you know, what, what's pretty obvious is that unfortunately, you know, YouTube, YouTube promotes clickbait activity. They promote it because they don't care whether you whether you lie or tell the truth. They don't care if you're confrontational or not confrontational. It doesn't it doesn't matter to them because the more clicks you get, the more subscribers you get, the more subscribers you have, the more they can charge for the advertising on your channel. So it's all about money. So they don't give a, you know what, they don't give a hoop whether you're full of malarkey 99% of the time, whether your content is um, is half uh, fake or not, or whether you like to insult brands because you know controversy sells. Uh, and uh, and they, all, they promote it because... They don't care. They just care about making money. And if uh, stirring the pot gets you more subscribers and helps them make more money, they're all for it, you know. And and personally, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm getting older. I'm getting tired of it. Uh, I don't enjoy it. I don't like it. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, uh, people should. To me, you, you do a disservice to the photo community when, when you're so worried about the monetization of your channel that you just get carried away with the clickbait. I mean, it's just so poor taste, in my opinion. And I can honestly say I challenge anybody to find anything on my channel that I did that will even resemble clickbait at all. Find it and point it out to me because I don't think you're going to find any of it. Uh, but, you yeah. know, it, it, clickbait sells. I mean, there, there's two things that drive up subscribers. Clickbait titles and if you focus on gear reviews. Those are the two things that launch you through the stratosphere. And if you don't do that, especially nowadays, unless you were like, you know, in YouTube in the early days and you establish yourself, you know, even just talking about, say, um, landscape photography or whatever, but there weren't a lot, it wasn't a lot of competition at the time. You, you, you might have gotten a whole lot of uh, subscribers because there weren't a lot of choices. But now there's so many choices that if you don't do, if you don't play the game, you know, it is what it is, you know. And, uh, well, I did like your review of your five by seven mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I buried that. Uh, if somebody wants to see a very poor, poor rendition of a, of a of a rear view shot of a shot with my with my head under a black uh, <laughs> black material. Um, 
over my over my head and half my camera with my Z9 with the 40 millimeter f2 lens trying to focus on the back of the ground plate from about maybe four inches away or six inches away well I don't know what the minimum focus distance on the 40 millimeter is but I was surely at the minimum focus dis distance believe me uh, I will show you what that what that image uh, looked like but it's uh, this is I, I flipped it so it's right side up, although it's it's, you know, the left to right orientation isn't correct. But normally when you're looking through a uh, the rear of a uh, field camera, your your image is upside down when you look at it. And uh, what is on the left is really on the right. It's upside uh, down and backwards, upside down and backwards. So yeah. uh, you could see. Over in this area, this is kind of a reflection of my hand on, on the camera, you know. So I had I had the thing set up on my second story um, uh, second story porch, and just shooting across the street. Um, there's like a, a just a half circle road here that reconnects to the, the street I live on, and with a handful of houses in there, it's just a it's just a loop, and. Um, but hey, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's interesting, and someday I told my wife someday I'll I'll spend the money, and someday you know, I keep saying someday the days run out, you know, are running out, but someday I will probably buy the developing materials and the and whatnot, and and buy some dry plate um, dry plates that I can put in the. You know, glass holders and uh and actually uh develop a develop an image like they did back in 1890 and see how it comes out uh it'll be uh a net it'll be obviously a negative on the plate and then you have to you know scan it on a scanner or whatever and um but it something that i'm going to try uh hopefully before while i'm still you know walking i'm still around so, and you said that the, 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 I mean, you can buy the, the, the dry plate with the right chemicals already put on. Yeah, the chemicals are, uh, a, a guy sells the dry plates, he makes them himself. Um, and can you send it back to him to the them after? On, they sell them on Amazon. I don't know if it was a 10 pack or 12 pack, but they're like, you know, 10 to $12 a plate. Okay. And individually wrapped, and then they're put in a, a black plastic bag, and you open them up in a in a dark room. And can you send you, it back to him to for develop? Because obviously no, you don't want to send it in the holder, but can you no, take you it have, out of the holder and and, and, and send it in a black uh, bag to him? Uh, not that I know of. He doesn't do uh, that. You have to you have to buy the chemicals, and you know you oh. can find out from him what the chemicals are. That the the. the uh, the developer is made by Kodak. Kodak still makes okay. a developer for that wow. process. And um, yeah. so I'm, I'm assuming the fixer is also from Kodak. So you, you basically just got to have uh, four, four developing trays. You need the, the developer. You need uh, water to rinse it after you water develop it. Then you need the fixer, and then you need another tray in your sink because they want running water. And then you and then you hang up the plate, the glass plate to uh, to dry. Wow. And uh, you know, then you have then you have a negative image. But uh, yeah, I want to I want to try it. You know, I, I think it would be cool. Um, I, I'll show you something quick. I'll get it and I'll show you something. Uh. Bear with me. Give me a second or two. So while we're waiting for Jeff, here I, I heard that David and I don't know if you heard about that. All the type of old camera when the images are inverse and, and flipped, right? That uh, mm. actually that aided in the composition because it, you're not used to see the image that way. So certain geometric elements are easy to be recognized if it's not a natural image to you, right? Because then you can say, okay, there is this leading edge and this perspective. So seeing it, seeing it inverted and clipped 
help some of these old photographers to make good composition. So, so this is this is, the, this is the plate holder here. This is a double double plate holder, and you probably can't see if you see that piece of brass. Yeah, you're right on there. Right on the here, other side, yeah. Right here, that piece of brass. There's a uh, see the number three, and it says pose. You slide that over so you know whether you expose that that plate or not. And you got you got that brass plate on each side, so each holder holds two plates. So you slide you slide it in the you slide it in the back of the camera. First you focus on the ground glass, then you swing the glass out of the way, then you slide the plate in, in and then you have these little metal tabs that eh, very hard to see little metal tabs that's, that are sticking out here you can see the one on the bottom but there's one for each side so you 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 squeeze it with your finger and you lift up so this is this is going to be that's the wrong size here this is this is this is the this is the part let's say that's facing that's going to face your that the image is going to come on from the lens Image is going to come and hit this. This is slid into your camera. And once it's in the camera and you've got your focus set, you slide this in and then you lift up. Yeah, you pull it up. You lift this up and then it folds down onto the other side. And then this is a piece of glass I just put in here, just yeah. a regular piece of glass. And you can see these little uh, swing out. Yeah. Tabs. Yeah. And you can see two two spring clips that are mounted in the holder that are bent upwards. And some of these I might have to bend up bend up a little more, but they help put pressure to keep the plate level. So you've got you got the spring clip so the plate is up at a certain height. And then you've got these little fingers at the top that you swing out. And then you've got at the bottom, you've got these these little swing these arms that that come out and capture the corners and, and hold everything in place. So I can I could go here and I can see I'll, I'll move that over, and then I can I can go and and then swing it out and capture the corner of that glass. So, you know, you'd have to put the, the dry plates in, in a dark room, and load up these plates and close them. And then, you know, do your thing, you know, and, and then bring them back in the dark room and take those, carefully take those plates out and develop them and dry them. And someday I'll, I'll give it a shot, but it's... Uh, it is kind of cool. It is kind of cool, and 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 you know you really get an appreciation for, um, and the dry the dry plate photography was a giant leap forward versus the uh, wet plate uh, collagen uh, collagen process because the wet plate process and uh, the, the the running joke is everybody says oh how come when i look at pictures of my great 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 grandfather from the 1800s nobody ever smiles in the picture well nobody <laughs> could, nobody could smile in the picture because when uh, uh when the when the two early types of, of processing uh wet plate being one of them came out your subject might have to stay perfectly still you know for 20 minutes <laughs> for that image so you nobody's gonna eh, eh, you're gonna you gonna last 20 minutes doing that no so everybody looks like this <laughs> everybody looks like their their you know best friend just passed away you know like, except for the dead guys yeah they, yeah so you know you you look like uh Everybody looks like Lurch, you know. <laughs> but that's why. And then the thing is, when the dry plates came out, that 20 minutes turned into like one minute. 
Okay, so that was a big, wow. a big thing because that, that it was now one minute, and you could you could just leave the exposed plates in the holders and buy enough holders and put them away, and you didn't have to develop them the same day. You know, you didn't have a constriction as to when you can develop it. When you had the wet plate photography, you had to you had to develop it before before that before that coating on that plate dried because once that coating on the plate dried it was no longer sensitive to light anymore and your image was not going to come out so it you know when it was wet you had you had basically 15 minutes you had 15 minutes to take that wet plate out of the holder go in the back of your wagon open up your chemistry set and develop that that shot within within a 15 minute time frame so quite the quite the uh quite the process uh but anyway that enough of that but uh, yeah it's it's you know photography is photography is meant to be fun uh history is is to me is fun and I'm not, and I, and I've said before, I'm not a history buff in terms of general history, but I do like camera history. I do like film history. Um, I find that fun because yeah, I, David's history. He's taking off. Yeah. David's history. Your, yeah. your history. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty well. So I'll, uh, I'll let you, I'll let you go jogging to take a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. so I, I'm going to, I'm going to call it a night, you know, all right, sir. Well, thank you and Anita for your images as always. Yeah, and thank you you running a, a great show here, and and everybody had had good shots tonight, and and Randall with the squirrely pictures. <laughs> I'll try to get better or closer. Well, we, we, we always knew there was something a little squirrely about Randall. I think. Well, yeah, it, uh, you know, and Gustavo's great with with the auto capture. You know, and uh, I don't know how much he uses it, but he's not saying, and that's okay too. But, but, no, no, uh, that's, uh, I love it, love it. Yeah, but uh, I, I, I got a friend of mine. He's got a bird feeder, and you got a problem when you're taking pictures there because the bird lands on the on your lens. How close is your close focus? <laughs> exactly. We were in a gift shop today, and they had, you know, uh, fake birds, you know, that were made out of metal, you know, and painted. Small little fake birds. And they said, these birds are meant to be placed in on a tree branch. They can be secured onto the tree. And it's like, yeah, well, that's that may be what I have to do for uh, bird photos, the way things are going. I'll have to buy all these fake birds clamp their legs around the tree branch and try to tell everybody it's a new species or something, even though it's made out of metal. <laughs> well, well, you can use your new camera then if you're going to do that. That's right. Oh well, yeah. You, you, your new mirrorless camera, new mirrorless camera. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know but, but anyway, but, but uh, Nita and I got a whole bunch of pictures that we took out of taxidermist and yellow knife. And uh, and they had all of his animals posed, you know. So and like in in a, like a real situation. So <clears throat> you may see some of those every so often, just to see if everybody's awake. <laughs> but anyway, I'll well, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for your time, Bye. sir. We Bye. appreciate it. Have a good night. You do. Good night. Bye. Well, what do you guys think? We're down to oh, we have a we have oh, Luis is here. Bring him in. He's wide awake. He looks awake. He's, is he live or is it Memorex? I think it's <laughs> <All right>. live. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can yes, hear yes, you very well. Oh, okay. Good. Yes. That, I am. I'm using a different laptop, so uh, I was checking the um, if the camera works. Yeah, yes, the, the camera yeah. works. The volume works. You're 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 live and alive and well. <laughs> Thank you. Well, more or less, I I woke up a bit early because I have to go to work in uh, 
off. 35 minutes, I have to leave. But, uh, so thank you, need you, to, for... you need to check at least if you can chair as well. Yeah, that's what I wanted to try, and uh, I have no idea how to do that. Okay, so if you look at the the bottom of your uh, restream screen, yeah. you have a micro. You got the microphone on the far left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you have the then you have one that says disable camera. Then yeah. you have one that's a square with an arrow that says share screen. So what you yes. want to do is before you click on that button, yeah, you want to open up the image that you want to share okay just open up the image that you want to share yeah uh put it in the background don't don't remove it from your desktop leave it on your desktop open yep go and click then click the share screen button and you're going to have three choices on the top one that says chrome tab one that mm -hmm. says window one that says entire screen you want sure. to click on the one that says window okay. and then you file your and then you find your photo that you want to share and you click on it and then you select the button on the bottom right that says share and people will be able to see it and okay. that will work also for the entire presentation so you that'll work like for the entire yeah if you do a slideshow yeah. once you once you have that, that whole window. slide so yeah, yeah. I, I have a file with uh, I have a file with a bunch of pictures, so uh, I can yeah. try to to open the first one and see it. So exactly, it and then you and then you can move it, right? Like a yeah. Yeah, representation. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a go. Okay. okay. Let's put my glasses on, and then it says window. Oh, I see. Can you? Can you guys see something? No. Uh, you will in a second, because now what that does is it shows it on my panel on my screen nobody else can see it oh i, I, see. I, I click a button and it's going to show up there oh yeah now now if this was a multi-page document you could just click through it and yeah. it'll I'll change let's, let's let's have a look hang on fantastic yeah there you go what you're you saying and I could try to make you know every make it a little bit bigger. Um, I'm coming back. Yeah, okay, you, so you have a pine glass on the bottom right with the plus. Can you put us on the bottom? On the Jeff? bottom right. Put you it's on the bottom. Glass. Yeah. Let me. Well, first I gotta before I put you on the bottom, I gotta go back to. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a few back, things here as well. Here and now I'll go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, that's good. Uh, so it works. So I have now two windows next to to each other, and then I can just go forward. Okay. Yeah. That's, Look at that. Right, we're ready. Forget work. We're, we're all ready for next <laughs> week. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, wow. we'll try again. We'll try again next week. Okay. What uh, <laughs> What time did you want to try to sneak on? I don't want to screw up your. I don't um, want you well, to get up too early. Well, ne next week I'm off. Uh, I think I'm off. <laughs> yeah, I'm off uh, for the weekend. So maybe not at three o'clock in the morning when you start, but maybe at four. So one one hour after after you start. Okay, so or yeah, or, or we could do it at at eleven, which would be two hours after we start. Would that be better for you? And any minute counts. <laughs> Yeah, why don't why don't we why don't we just say eleven o'clock? So that'll give you two hours. Yeah, I'll I'll well I'll, I'll be ready before that hopefully. So uh, okay. I'll try to uh, to no that, that's fine. I have all slides with showing like this one you can see the the country, and yeah. then I'll I'll highlight per area what you can see, and then I'll just show a few pictures, some of the landscape and 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 the uh, and the pictures of. Of, of, uh, of the animals you can see birds okay. reptiles amphibians etc well that yeah. sounds that that sounds perfect okay. that sounds perfect yes. and, uh, and, uh, and and i i liked your um also your video with that old camera and uh, my comment was it's not a good camera for wildlife photography and you're right <laughs> no you'd have to you'd have to like stun everything first and <laughs> you'd, have to use, you'd have to use a taser on everything first so they can't move <laughs> that's true yeah 
Okay. It's a pity uh, David went away because I've been to Madeira a couple of times and I'm Portuguese, but I cannot explain what, what's going on with that statue. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that statue as well, and uh, but I didn't take a picture. <laughs> oh, my God. The, 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 the footballer? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo. Ah, Ronaldo. Uh, now now you, I understand. <laughs> okay. Very good, good, very good. So um, I'll uh, I'll leave you guys then because I have to get ready to, to go to work. So well, uh, I'll thanks, see you guys next you. week and we'll talk for a little while, I think. That sounds good. Uh, good to us. We appreciate you, you spending the time to do this. It's a, a greatly appreciated. No, I, I have the entire file ready, so uh, I could have done today it as well, but uh, no, I, I have no time well, for it. See, see, we've we've lined up a couple other victims that we're going to work on to try to do presentations as well. <laughs> excellent, excellent. We're going to try to get Martin Hill Hild on to do a thing on uh, ultraviolet, uh, using you. ultraviolet light to light up uh, plants at night, and they take, did some great photos with. And and uh, I think Terry, we want to get uh, wrangle him to to get into uh, all the stacked images that he likes to do and how he processes processes them and everything when he does astrophotography so i got i got to contact those guys and work on them a little bit see if we can get them to come in <laughs> oh you you know what i saw in uh in, in costa rica this uh one of these last times somebody that was doing a lot of macro shots but only with the flashlight as as the only uh, light and the shots were great so i actually want to want to Test that these next few few days or a couple of weeks to see uh, how that goes. Yeah, just don't get the one they advertise uh, that's uh, used by the military that can light up a, a quarter acre of land with uh, when you turn it on. <laughs> well, there are a few that are quite powerful. That's that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Or at least if if the beam is if the beam is not concentrated. If I walk next to my wife, she has a uh, flashlights, but where the beam goes all in all directions, I can hardly see anything if I'm walking next to her. Is that You're blind? <laughs> it's not her fault. It's just that the beam is so wide that if she points it in in a slightly, uh, well, not even on my direction, but slightly to the to the sides, then I I'm completely blind. <laughs> but very uh, good. We'll let you get ready for work, and and we look forward to next week. Uh, I, I see most men there. Well, thank you. There you go. <laughs> 11, 11 o'clock Eastern time. <laughs> uh, I saw the light. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's what, what is it? It's seven o'clock, two past seven here. So see you guys. Have a good one. Thank you very much. See you next week. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> so that'll, that'll be good. And uh, everybody's going to enjoy that. You know, Rakesh has a comment here, do some photography meetups like camera clubs do. Yeah, it's kind of hard when you have an audience that lives all around the world, though. <laughs> and, uh, you know, where everybody can argue where the best spot is, right? Or, and somebody's going to say, that's too far for me, that's too far for me, and then nobody goes. <laughs> that's why you have an RSVP. You yeah. know, it's uh, well, it's just like, you know, the, the when, you know, when when we were, uh, you know, when Chuck was when Chuck was uh, doing the show, you know, on Saturday nights or even Wednesday, Wednesday at noon or whatever. And, and there'd be we'd have some people that would come on that would suggest, you know, going to one of the camera events in California or something. Yeah. Well, not not everybody can go to California, you know. I mean, it's nice to talk about, but uh, in some cases, some of that stuff was like, you know, the WPPI, you know, which was mainly portrait photography and wedding photography. And if you don't do portrait or wedding photography, it's like, you know, are you really going to enjoy yourself? You know, you're going to go. That's a long that's a long flight uh, to go just to meet a few people. You know what I mean? He he. Uh... He did, but he did the the VNH uh, 
miss it. Remember that? that was yeah, the B&H was, visit worked well because he, he was able, you know, some of those some of those guys already lived in New York or New Jersey. Exactly. So it, was, exactly. it was easy for them. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if I, if, I had, if I was still living in Connecticut, you know, where I used to live and he did it and I was involved with the show, I would have gone to B&H. Well, I don't know if I would have went because my wallet, <laughs> my credit card, my credit card would probably start getting really hot in my wallet. You know, exactly. they would start burning my behind before I even take it out of the wallet, you know, like warning it's me, nice. don't do it, don't do it. You would have the uh, B&H pay boo-hoo card. <laughs> I, have that, I have that card. I do have that card. Yeah. But if you live closer, it'd be boo-hoo. It'd be boo-hoo, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I lost my house, <laughs> my car. <laughs> I had to sell my dog. <laughs> yeah, it would be bad. <laughs> so, Mr. Yeah. Jeff, I, I also need to sleep a little bit tonight. So I may have to go a little bit early. Because well, I, 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 I think I we're going to quit. I think we're going to quit anyway because we're down to nine yeah. people. So it really yeah. doesn't make sense to keep going for nine for nine people. So, yeah. folks, we're we going to call it a night early for the first time on a photo review show uh some have to travel some have to get up early to take pictures some just got back from driving and they need to pass out so i just want to thank all you guys for for joining us tonight for the show and we're going to sign off early tonight so everybody thank you very much we hope we see you next week uh Guys on the panel, I'll let you say your goodbyes to everybody, and I thank everybody on the panel for, for coming on because we always appreciate the support. Good luck to uh, Rakesh and uh, you, Gustavo, and anyone else who's uh, going out to uh, shoot the eclipse. Hopefully that clouds the sky stay clear for that. Exactly. We all pray for it. Keep the fingers crossed. Thank you, guys. Yeah, or, or, or bring one heck of a leaf blower with you so you can blow the clouds <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. One in each hand. One in each hand. <laughs> Take care, yeah, everybody. Yeah.